Do 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 Sweet. We are online. I just want to load up some license free music here to play in the background. It's probably going to be mostly dumb EDM music with beats like this, but let's get hype, people! If this is the music we're listening to, let's get fucking hype. What do you say? Alright, I'm just changing around this deck list here a little bit. I kind of feel like I wanted to put an Anafenza in the main deck for a while. Spellskate has been underperforming as the weakest card in the deck list. So I think I'm going to move it to the sideboard. I might cut it completely. But it is just really sweet against random ass decks like Boggles, things like that. Burn, it's still pretty good against. And even against something like Affinity, it's got marginal utility. I think that would mean I'd have to cut Voice of Resurgence. And it kind of works because Spellskite is still a good card against the Jundi deck. So, or uh, I'm sorry, against the Burn decks. Uh, but potentially has more versatility. It's worse against like a controlling deck. But I think I'm okay there in general. Yeah, alright, I like this. Um, I do have one league that we need to finish up. Where do we find the leagues at? Right here. I'm pretty sure I've got... Oh, no, 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 that's standard. That's why. Okay, where's... Oh, okay, leagues you've joined up at the top here. Okay, that makes the most sense. Let me know if this music is too loud or something, too. You know what? I'm going to turn it down because it's just too loud just for myself. Right, let's load this up here. There's not many more levers I can turn it down on. Alright, I just wanted some music for the background here. Let's move this chat off the screen. We won and will be on the play. We've got a turn two Vizier with a path to exile and a Gavany Township. I'll keep. I'm also thinking about potentially cutting a land. The problem with that is I don't want to play um, 22 lands and three Gavany Townships. So Gavany Township is kind of just like my half land, half spell hedge. And if I cut a card, then I'd have to cut a Gavany Township, at which point, like, is that really worth cutting? Alright, so we're playing against a um, Primeval Titan deck here. I guess I'll just hang on to my Path to Exile, and I'll let them cast it. The thing is, with this, with this Sakura Tribe Scout, they're going to be able to put their lands out on the battlefield, but we are playing against a, uh, a Titan Bloom deck here. I think playing Razor Verge Thicket actually kind of makes some sense too, and just to get in for one. Yeah, yeah. But my removal spell will still be able to answer a Primeval Titan. So while not the best, I can save it for that. And look, he missed. He just doesn't have shit. Alright, wait, what happened? Alright, he revealed an amulet. And didn't play a land for the turn, which means he doesn't have a bounce land. Or just doesn't have a bounce land that he wants to use yet because he found the amulet. Okay, that could make sense too. I think I still just hold out here. Like, you're either going to path a Sakura Tribe Scout as soon as your opponent plays it, or you're not going to... Uh, play your Sakura Tribe Scout at all. Alright, so we smack for three. We have infinite mana for next turn, so we've got a bunch of live top decks. And I'll play the Tap Godless Shrine. 
No, my opponent didn't put in a land with Sakura Tribe Scout again. Holy shit! All right, my opponent kills off their gemstone mine to put an amulet into play. Then they're going to tap their scout. Okay, so they're going to make four mana here. Once here, oh, another amulet, and then play their land for turn. All right, go up to five mana. If they had one more amulet, uh, they could have done something here. But with five mana, they're going to play an Asusa, which is going to gain them a whole bunch more mana. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I should have... Eh, you know what? I don't actually think I should have pathed Asusa. Because they would have had enough mana regardless. I will turn off my auto yields because my opponent is going to be able to cast a Primeval Titan here. They've got 10 mana now. I'm not sure if they get more mana. Might be a little bit of sauce in my opponent's hand. Alright, so here's... 10 of that mana for the Primeval Titan. This mana is going to immediately untap itself. I'm going to respond to the amulet triggers so that way my opponent is already forced into what they want to get. I think they might be able to... Oh yeah, they're going to be able to get Teleria West and go put another Titan onto the battlefield here. Um, a Path to Exile actually generates them even more mana. What I can actually do here, yeah, this is pretty disgusting. Uh, we might still be able to win next turn, so all we have to do is not die this turn. And we've got, what, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, at least between six to ten cards that just win us the game. So somewhere between... 10 to 20 percent of our deck wins the game still yeah we knew they were gonna go get a oh no they just had another primeval titan okay well i'm just going to oh they're gonna be able to give both of these primeval titans haste it's actually pretty disgusting all right i'm gonna path one of the primeval titans in response to my opponent giving it haste here <laughs> oh god Uh, I don't actually have to respond to them giving it haste. I can I can wait. Alright, but both of their prime times are gonna get haste and vigilance and plus two attack. I don't actually think I'm dead off one Titan swing. My opponent's got no more land drops. What what could they possibly do? <laughs> So the idea then is they're going to get Kessig Wolf Run and a Kessig Wolf Run and the Gruel Land, and then they'll be able to give one of their creatures. Oh, they're just going to pack this here. Did I miss that part? Yes, I did. <laughs> All right, well, we'll at least let them play it out here. I could have pathed, pathed, pathed the Sakura Tribe Elder to keep some of this stuff from happening. Oh, this is a double gemstone mine. That's not lethal. They are making mana. Oh, they're going to make mana off some gemstone mines, and then the other prime time's going to go get Kessig? I suppose so. That's a really weird land to get if you can get any land in your deck. Oh, they're going for Sun Home. Now, there's the Gruel Turf, but it is Sun Home. Interesting. Alright, double Struko. And Trample, right? Okay, well, he's got to give something trample... Oh, no, he doesn't have to give something trample here. Oh, he gives the one guy trample, and then I block it, and then un it untaps, and he gives the other guy... Not trample. Uh, double strike. 
Okay. So I will have to block one of these guys, which means I lose my Devoted Druid. Which means this is going to be a little bit tough. But I can block to not die here. Oh, prime time has trample, like just just because it has trample. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> I haven't played against that deck in so long. Uh, clearly, we want this. Might even want Eidolon in this deck. Yeah, it counters Summer Bloom. <laughs> Just me trying to read my opponent's cards is entertaining. Tide Hollow Sculler seems insane. Sin Collector still seems reasonable. And there's probably some things that we can cut here. So, uh, well, we can give Spell Skite. Trample, right? Let me read Sun Home real quick. And what's the other land that my opponent's playing? Target creature gains double strike, and I think I think Spell Skype also breaks up the other land. Alright, we definitely don't need scavenging ooze, and we can trim on some kitchen finxes. Abrupt Decay seems good in trying to break up the combo. I think I'm just going to board out all this stuff. The problem is Infinite Life actually does beat my opponent, so I'm not totally sure. I'm not totally sure the route I want to go. <laughs> yeah, this is the first game of the stream, so... Um, I'm kind of waking up here to what the hell Magic the Gathering is. Alright, let's just cut some random shit. Alright, this can miss. I think we want all the removal spells. Maybe we just don't need, like, Reclamation Sage. Though. I think Spellskate's good. Alright, let's try this shit. So we've got turn one Birds of Paradise. We've got two spot removal spells to keep him off Bloom. We can path the Titan if he gets there. Alright, this seems solid. Uh, he definitely didn't draw the best possible hand, because he went turn one nothing, turn two dig for nothing, turn three combo off. His hand was okay, but it wasn't anything crazy, I don't think. Yeah, his hand seems solid. Got Tide Hollow Sculler, hopefully to break up something here. Oh, great, we get to steal his Bloom if he grabs one. Alright, so we get to steal his Amulet, which we are certainly going to do. We also have access to Avon Mind Sensor here, but I'm just going to Skull my opponent here. Get like a little bit punished maybe if he's got double Amulet, but probably not even. Alright, so let's take a look. It's in a book. Kozilek's return. Uh, that seems annoying as shit. Alright, I think I take Kozilek's return. Let my opponent play Amulet. And then I'll grab it. Once it's in play. And then I have Aven Mind Sensor for prime time. I mean, I just have to protect the Aven Mind Sensor from Kozilek's return. Yep. 
So my opponent on Explore, Amulet, and then uh, I think three lands, two lands. Yeah, three lands. Grove, um, a Bounce Land, and a Sun Home. The, uh, the Simic Growth Land. Simic Bounce Land. Simic Growth Chamber, right? Yeah. No attacks. Yeah, just have to protect the Aven Mind Sensor here. Most important card in the hand by far. And if we can protect it, we should be able to get a win here. How does the music sound? Is it uh, a little bit loud? It's loud for me, actually, but... Oh, you know what? I can turn it down. I'm an idiot. All right. I'm going to turn it down a little bit right here. Yeah, it was mostly just loud for me. Just like to have some music going on in the background here for when I start comboing. Going with the royalty free playlist today. Alright, there's the amulet. So we're definitely going to want to tag that. My opponent's going to play the Simic Growth Chamber, bouncing Gemstone Mine, I think. Yep. Alright, so my opponent's just going to go for the the land dump hand. It's going to reset their gemstone mine here. You know what, if that's what my opponent's doing, I actually don't really have to tag the amulet here. That actually doesn't get me anywhere. Though I guess I can tag the amulet and play Devoted Druid both in the same turn. And then next turn I Aven Mind Sensor and play Primeval Titan. Hmm, what else could I even Abrupt Decay in the deck? What, what else can I even decay in my opponent's deck? I actually can't play Devoted Druid in Abrupt Decay because I have two non-black, non-green lands. Uh, I'll just end step and Aven Mind Sensor. That's fine. Asusa doesn't even seem great either. Tireless Tracker. Alright, well that's a good Abrupt Decay target. Abrupt Decay, his clues. No, he's going to get a clue here. I could go for the Aven Mind Sensor Path to Exile play here. No, let's just Abrupt Decay this guy and Aven Mind Sensor his prime time. Uh, I'm going to throw in Aven Mind Sensor now, Abrupt Decay later. This way we can start smacking him. Only two green mana to work with still, but... All right. If my opponent has a bounce land, they'll be able to play a prime time here. Alright, so prime time can come into play. But my opponent can only find cards from the top two cards of their deck. They do five cards in hand, so... There's a decent shot they're going to have a backup Titan here regardless. That's fine. So, from the top four cards of their deck, they get to put two lands into play. That's probably not going to be anything too special. It might let them sacrifice this clue token. Alright, looks like they actually just hit... The Nutter Butters. No, they grab one. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And we're going to path this again. 
My opponent is going to be pretty unlikely to be able to find a land off of Path. But next turn, they're going to have a pretty good turn. They're going to be able to play Primeval Titan. They won't be able to give it um, haste immediately, it doesn't look like. I am just going to... Oh, you know what? I probably should have Gavinied there. Yeah, I definitely should have. But I'm committed at this point. Next turn, we get to hit my opponent for 9 damage. Very close, very close. No, not 9. We need a land to hit them for 9. Right now we're hitting them for 8. Yeah, I think I should have Gavinied there because this doesn't change my clock. And it would have put Avon Mind Sensor and Skuller out of Kozilek's return range. Like, now my opponent's going to play Primeval Titan here. I'm only going to be able to hit them for four in the air anyways. As I'm going to pump up Avon Mind Sensor. I'll hit them for four in the air, and then I'll hit them for five in the air, so... Um, this clock's actually pretty slow. Oh, I have six, but... I think we're still going to get this game just because Avon Mind Sensor is so clutch against my opponent's deck. But we'll see. I mean, they can definitely just go grindy plan. They're not like an aggro deck now. My opponent also already has access to both the Slayer's Stronghold and the Sun Home. So if my opponent can find red and white mana, you know, they're kind of doing it. My opponent can make this a 1-3 right now. Seems reasonable. Alrighty. Uh, I'm not going to Path to Exile this. Let's instead... Gavany up. So my opponent's plan there is to block Tide Hollow Sculler with Se with Sakura Tribe Scout and then activate Slayer's Stronghold and make this a 3-1 so that they can trade and get back their Kozilex return. Sure. I saw you. Alright, end step they're going to also put in the land. That's a pretty sweet play. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Alright, now my opponent can play a Sun Home. They can also transmute their Teleria West. That's what we're going to see here. They're going to get to look at the top four cards of their deck and try to find something that costs zero. Um, you're right, Vladex. You're just right. In my head, I was also going to attack with Tide Hollow Sculler and Nova Hierarch potentially, but I quickly realized that was a bad attack. So I like half committed, but yeah, you're right. Should have just attacked with Avon Mind Sensor. Get that Exalt Arena. All right, my opponent's comboing off something here. I don't exactly know what's going on. But I still feel somewhat safe. They're gonna transmute another Teleria West. All right, good shit. So they found a Simic Growth Chamber off the first one. What are they gonna find off the second one here? Yeah, playing around Blessed Alliance, sure. I mean, might as well. E -E. Alright, I was wondering what card my opponent was going to have. Look like it's going to be Engineered Explosives to X equals 2 kill Tide Hollow Sculler. But they won't have enough to have that do everything, right? Because they'll spend one more mana, they'll get back Kozilek's return. But Avon Mind Sensor should be able to kill them. At the very least, my team will be... Out of range with Gavany Township here. So my opponent's got no extra mana. So there's almost an argument for... Oh shit, they have it? Oh yeah, they've got the... Oh wow. Okay, I guess we are gonna get wrecked here. 
because I didn't double Gavany. All right, punished. I played this really, really terribly. Yeah, if I had just Gavany to turn earlier. So we go up to 17 life here, but our team gets exiled. My opponent's got one land, one card in hand. Let's find an Eternal Witness. Nope, we find a Basic Forest. Alrighty. We do still have Path to Exile, so we counter their next Titan. <laughs> Alright, a bunch of mana. I think I can yield to... Nah, I won't yield. I think my opponent's just putting a land out on the battlefield here. Nope. They're playing a big fireball. Sphinx's Revelation for X equals 10. What the hell is happening? Alright, it is a walking ballista. Good shit. Right, we'll just path this. Stops us from playing any creature. Curious if my opponent will make it all into damage, or if part of it's going to be a land, too. So, my question is, with clue tokens, engineered explosives, and walking ballista, at some point, is Stony Silence a reasonable play against our opponent? We have our opponent on a three-turn clock here now. We hit them for one, then two, then three, for a total of six. Looks like my opponent's got something going on. Alright, a Haste, Vigilance, a Sousa. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, my opponent still has a Sun Home in play. Alright, well, we have an Abrupt Decay target here, too. Mm. Yeah, considering... So my opponent has... One, two, three, four. Yeah, they just get to double strike this. One. I mean, I'm actually winning this race. One plus two plus three equals six. So I have my opponent dead in six turns. My opponent can hit me for three. But yeah, until they have like a red bounce land, a red bounce land would be reasonable. But we can always pivot and change an abrupt decay at any point. They're not. I guess they could draw a like Kessig Wolf Run and kill us. Yeah, more blue and green mana doesn't help them. It does let them reset their gemstone mine here. So I think in response to this trigger, they should tap gemstone mine. Oh, this is the white mana. Okay. So this is white mana. Oh, right, Asusa's letting them... Oh, I'm just dumb. Asusa lets them play more than one land each turn. So they are allowed to make a hasty double strike arena here. All right, solid. So we take six, but we gain back like two life in that exchange too. So we're really only taking four. Yeah, I mean, we can take six again next turn. I think I'm going to do it. We only lose to Kessig Wolf Run. We also obviously lose to Primeval Titan, but we can't play around that. What else could kill us? If they play... I guess if they play a... Alright, I'm just going to play it a little bit safe. No, but then it gives them two more top decks. But if they draw, like, a, a tireless tracker, we lose. Alright, let's pay two life here. So my plan here is to abrupt decay Azusa. 
and activate Gavany Township. Still means we're dead to Tireless Tracker on the following turn. I guess we're actually not even any more dead to Tireless Tracker than we ever were. That's fine. We do gain back our life points, so maybe we can do something here. All right, clearly we have this. They can't pack this. They are going to play a post-combat Asusa. All right, all right. It's actually the most awkward card they could have had, both for them and me, because it means that I should have just taken the aggressive line. All right, we're dead to anything. Here's a Devoted Druid. Devoted Druid can chump lock, and then we kill them next turn. That's the plan. All right, so we need them to not draw Primeval Titan. We gave them an extra turn here, I think. I think they would have even cast Pact of Negation there on Devoted Druid. Alright, so they are going to pump up their Asusa again. We don't even have to chump block it here because it's not lethal. But famous last words, so I'm going to. If this is a Primeval Titan, that's pretty unfortunate. No, it looks like it is a... Slayer Stronghold putting me to 8. Sun Home putting me to 9. Yeah, alright. So they're going to put me to 9, give their guy double strike. And another Slayer Stronghold. So we do win this one here, I am pretty sure. I'll block the. Don't want to die to Lightning Bolt. Alright, so this should be enough to get us there. Oops, 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 that would have been bad. And our guy is already out of Kozil X return range. Let's just smack with our Linvala Keeper of Paradise here, our 3 4 flyer. Alright, alright. <laughs> So that was all pretty embarrassing. My opponent does have more than a few Stony Silence targets. We also want to board something in now that we know that they're going to try to wrath us. And it will also protect uh, just some of our other cards that we've got going on here. I think I'll trim a Vizier for that. I know our combo is good against them. But I'm not sure what else I can trim. Sin Collector does take Kozilek's return, so I'm kind of into that as well. Engineered Ex it doesn't take Engineered Explosives, though. I feel like I want Eidolon, too. Eidolon seems like it does some stuff. It, it stops Explore and... Wait, oh, Summer, Summer's Bloom is banned, though, right? Summer Bloom? That's the main card that it interacts with, Summer Bloom, but Asus is the new Summer Bloom, so it stops that. But so does just Abrupt Decay, right? Like, I don't know what I want Eidolon more than. I don't think I want it more than my own combo, or Spell Skite, or Fulminator Mage. Yeah, Bloom is just a Sousa now. You know what? I guess I could just board out or board in an Eidolon and board out a Cord. The idea being that Cord will just find something like Eidolon and another hate card will just be cheaper. Yeah, it does stop packs. But this is kind of reasonable against combo to board out a Cord for another hate card. Just because any hate is good hate, and just making our deck slightly cheaper could be better. 
I don't think I want Sin Collector still. If I board in a Stony, I'm going to board out Walking Ballista, and I don't think I want to do that either. So let's just go with this. We have Spell Skite and Walking Ballista as Stony Silent targets of our own. I just, I just have trouble cutting Eternal Witness. Like, we're going to just return Abrupt Decays and Path to Exiles and stuff. Eternal Witness is just one of my favorite cards, so maybe I'm a little bit more likely to keep it than the average Joe. This hand is just mana with nothing to do with it. If we draw a Court of Calling, we win turn three. All right, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, our life total might actually matter. And we've got more than the right colors of mana. Alright, Ancient Strings here. Find the amulet. They revealed Gemstone Mine, played Celestia Sanctuary. Alright, let's just lose to Anger of the Gods this game, I suppose. I could have sequenced that differently. Or Culligan's, Culligan's Return, I mean, obviously. Turf, three mana, they're gonna play a Sousa, and then they'll have four mana. At least I understand the deck now. Alright, so now my opponent's got access to four mana. They're gonna play Gruel Turf, bounce it. I guess they have. I don't know what they have for four mana. Still, we draw a Court of Calling and we win. Four mana is EE -E with X equals two. Okay. Sure. And then the mana to blow it up. Sure. That's not the worst. We get two mana out of our Devoted Druid here. Our opponent's also not doing that much. They will have access to Primeval Titan next turn. And we're not doing anything this game. So that much is awkward. Alright, let's get on the beats. Alright. See you, Devoted Druid. So yeah, now my opponent can play a Primeval Titan here. Which point we potentially just lose, like, on the spot. Our hand also doesn't have much going for it anymore. If we draw a Court of Calling, that probably has to be a hate card now. But if we draw a Court of Calling, we can still go get Avon Mind Sensor. And if we draw an actual hate card, we can cast it. They can do the full combo from nothing. Alright, looks like they're just dumping their lands. They don't have anything. At least that's what it looks like. Nope, this is a Titan. Alright, 
All right, so my opponent can go and get Sun Home plus the Boros Land. We're learning here. They can attack for eight and then, but they can't give it double strike in combat, right? There's no way to do that with only one amulet. So this is simply an attack for eight, I believe. Yeah, they just go get this combo. Set it up to do it. Do us dirty next turn. The fact that we have no devoted druid in play means that we can't really pressure their life total. My opponent's going to get a Pact of Negation, which does seem strictly worse than the other guys. Spellskite seems solid, though. And we've got a few ways to get blue mana here. I definitely want to put Devoted Druid onto the battlefield, too. Alright, let's play Godless Shrine. No pay two. Devoted Druid. And I think I'm actually going to need all of my life points here. Oh, never mind. I can still attack with one of my birds. I doubt my spell sky can do enough here. This Birds of Paradise swing also is just not going to matter. So maybe I just shouldn't have done it either. But I can give Spellskite plus three attack and double strike. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this insane? My opponent played Boros Garrison as their land for the turn, so I don't really know what's happening here. Oh, my opponent gets to play a bunch of lands for the turn. That's why. Alright, so they're going to transmute for the Titan to start things off. Oh, wait, no, 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 they already transmuted. Oh, they are going to. Engineered explosives for X equals 2. Once again. Alright, Stony Silence would have actually been pretty good against the things that they're trying to do. But like I said, this kind of doesn't interact with that anyways. So then they'll be able to Slayer Stronghold, and then in combat they'll be able to give this guy double strike. Yeah, Engineered Explosives, being able to Teleria West for that seems pretty insane actually, so I guess that's why they do it. Yeah, now there is no card that I could draw here to win, though my opponent also is just going to have lethal. They're going to attack with the Titan for 8. And then go get Sun Home plus Forest, and then they can kill us. Alrighty, that'll do it. <laughs> this was kind of a shit show, but you know what? We're done. We're done with this league matchup, or with this league, I should say, because that puts us, uh, yeah, at a bad record. So let's d drop from this league, and let's just start a brand new one. Fresh slate, let's only play against tier one decks, and let's win. I have edited the deck slightly. I'm going to try out this list right here. I'm going to put in an Anafenza and move the Spell Skate to the sideboard. Spell Skate's been a little bit lackluster. And from the sideboard, I cut the last Voice of Resurgence, thinking that Spellskite will still be good in that matchup. But yeah, I'm going to try to see what we can make happen with this list here now. We lost the die roll. Gritorp, best of luck. And what do we have? The turn three win? Sounds good. This is the way to start it off here. Let's just turn three win. Let's play against Tron or something uninteractive. Let's have them not have a turn three Karn. And let's just blow them up, baby. 
Our opponents kept seven. That's pretty unlucky. But I feel pretty solid about this hand. This hand is very reliant on Devoted Druid. If Devoted Druid gets blown up or something. All right, so it looks like it is going to be Tron. And looks like they aren't going to have the turn three Karn. So that is exactly what I asked for. My opponent now needs some type of spot removal spell to be able to interact with us. But, hey, ask and you shall receive, right? Hello, my opponent said, oh, hi there. I'm not sure if they know me or what the dealio is, but... Hello, Gretorp. Oh, wait, is this the same dude? And I guess they missed off their ancient stirrings. Wait, it's the same freaking dude? Oh, how is this fair at all? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um. So if I just play Duskwatch Recruiter, they're not going to pop it, right? If I play Devoted Druid, they 100% pop it, but maybe they'll pop it here and we can spike a win. Just found out that Magic the Gathering Online censors Lamao. L-M-A-O. I mean, I guess the A stands for ass, but that seems like a pretty egregious thing to censor. And looks like our Duskwatch Recruiter is going to survive here. Alright, and we've got a Devoted Druid to replay. Yeah, I mean, I guess my opponent will just keep off. Well, for now, I'm just going to beat my opponent down. If I play Devoted Druid, all that's going to do is make my opponent blow up Engineered Explosives. So for right now, let's just get in for some damages. And our Dash Eth, thank you very much for the follow, my friend. Our Dashith. Man, my opponent's keeping two mana open at every step along the way here. I'm trying to even think if there's something that I could cord for. Well, I think I can spike infinite life here against my opponent by playing Vizier. Right? If I just play Vizier, I've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. So I can randomly gain infinite life here in response to my opponent popping engineered explosives. That seems reasonable. So I'm going to respond to this. Let's crack our windswept teeth first so that we can scry. Uh, this does mean that we're getting ourselves a viscerous here. 
when it's not necessarily great. Okay, my opponent does concede to infinite life here, so appreciate them for that. And what's our sideboarding plan? We want these spot removal spells. Do we not want the infinite life plan that, like, my opponent clearly cannot beat? Synthetictra? Synthetic Hydra. <laughs> Synthetic Hydra, thank you very much for the follow. Even Mind Sensor is definitely the plan. Selfless Spirit for their anger effects. Spell Skate is reasonable. Fulminator Mage is insane. What do we not want? Uh, definitely going to put out Anafenza, but I think leave in some Viziers. My opponent just wants to blow up my Druid so bad. I kind of do want to play Stony Silence now. My opponent's got two Engineered Explosives, four ways to tutor for them. Clue Stones and Walking Ballista. Let's just blow up Stony Silences. Support in Reclamation Sage, so we can still combo kill with Walking Ballista here. Hmm. Let's cut like this. Oh no, I want Tidehole of Sculler in the deck as well. Hmm. Cut all the Kitchen Finks, I guess. I mean, I don't need the Kitchen Finks if I'm not going to play any Viscera Sears. The fact that my opponent's deck isn't that reactive like means maybe I should just be all in on the combo plan. Infinite Life does beat my opponent's deck, but they're just not required to concede to Infinite Life. At which point, why am I even playing this deck? But... <laughs> hmm. Alright, let's give this a shot. Let's see how Stony Silence can interact with my opponent here. What's going to happen is I'm going to play Stony Silence and then my opponent's just going to Kozilek return me. But if we have Selfless Spirit, that protects against both. Selfless Spirit plus potentially the turn 3 combo. We need to draw one more land and we need my opponent to not have Engineered Explosives. But if both of those things happen, then we do have a turn 3 combo here. Here's the one more land. I'll run that out and go get an Overgrown Tomb and step here. My opponent can do some crazy shit. Celestia Sanctuary, okay. Simic Growth Chamber into play. I think they're just going to be replaying their forest here. I'll just crack my land. Oh, they have another Ancient Stirring, so that's pretty cool. I don't know why I grabbed the Temple Garden, just wasn't looking. There's the amulet. <coughs> Alright, solid. Alright, well, let's make them have it. I'm going to play a Devoted Druid here. We win the game if my opponent does not have Engineered Explosives or Kozil Extra Turn right now. Or if they don't win the game. I think they're pretty unlikely to just straight up win the game, but we shall see. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana. So they can cast a Primeval Titan. They can give it haste. Even if they give it haste and double strike this turn, which I don't think they can do, I don't think that's enough. Now, if they're making a bunch of mana here to engineer it explosives us, that could be enough. We see Primeval Titan come into play. Like, what if they just get Teleria West, Simic Growth Chamber, go... Yeah, they bounce the Teleria West, they use this mana to transmute, and go get engineered explosives... Holy shit. No, they grabbed a Pact of Negation. Okay. Um, that should be good enough, then. So 
So I could cord here. They're just going to pack my cord. I still have to go for it. It taps them out and potentially means we can win next turn when we Eternal Witness, depending on what we draw. All right. Oh, right, yeah, my opponent can't get to Laria West and then also give the guy haste. All right, so X equals two. They might let me do this part. No, they're not going to let me. And that means we're done our turn. Yep, they tap their Simic Growth Chambers and a Forest. This probably means that they're just going to attack us for six. And then the next turn will be the big turn where they just do a bunch of crazy bullshit. Pact is pretty sweet. The fact that Primeval Titan can enter the battlefield and draw you a Pact of Negation is pretty sweet. Combo wouldn't have been great this game either, because it just wouldn't have wouldn't have gotten out there in time. I think I'm gonna board out Stony Silences for game three. Okay, Asusa. And what else are we gonna see? Another primeval titan here? Or is my opponent all done? The problem is, like, even if I Eternal Witness back this Court of Calling, I don't have Lethal or anything. But I can Eternal Witness back the Cord, play the Selfless Spirit. Alright, my opponent's going for it, so I guess they have another Titan. I don't think they have enough lands, right, to transmute and play the Titan. Maybe they just do. Transmute and then... Oh, Walking Ballista kill my guy. Blarg. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Wait, we might actually be able to still win this. Wait a minute, uh, this might be crazy. Stony Silence, they pop. And then I play a Devoted Druid. Next turn I've got enough to... Do I have enough? To court out the Druid? I must. One, two, three, four, five, six. A Eternal Witness... That costs two of my mana. Which leaves me with four. So I have to draw a land. Alright, if I draw a land that I can play, I win still. Oh, but this is just going to kill me. This is just going to be double strike and kill me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't have enough life points, but... Ah, it was close. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, we still have one more game. Oh, what am I doing? Alright, we're fine, we're fine. We still have one more game, we can win the next one. Spellskite is actually good against Walking Ballista too. Alright, let's board in Spellskite. Let's board out these Stony Silences. And I think I'm going to board back in Noble Hierarch, just for speed. 
Though maybe I'd rather just have the redundancy of Vizier. We're on the play, so we don't need that much speed. But the more, the, just the more mana we have access to, potentially, the more we can do. Eidolon. I don't know. I, the more more like the board states, I feel like Eidolon's just less and less relevant. They do play Azusa and Primeval Titan in the same turn a lot of the times, but they could also just as easily do them in sequential turns and be just as just as well off. Alright. Eternal Witness is slow, but it's a combo piece. Turn one, bird. Turn two, devoted druid. Turn three, collect a company, try to win. We also have a turn two, walking ballistic to kill Sakura Tribe Scout. Alright, that's an amulet. So, yeah, we're a little bit off from being able to Reclamation Sage Amulet. Hopefully they don't have a turn two Anger. If they don't have turn two Kozil Extra Turn, then we get to at least cast Collected Company here. They've got double Amulet. Okay. Well, they could go Engineered Explosives now. Alright, Ancient Stirrings... No, they can't look for Engineered Explosives. They're out of land drops. They have an Asusa they could keep going. Alright, they found Engineered Explosives, but they're not going to be able to use it here. They can cast it, but they can't activate it. And if they cast it, we might be able to just blow them out. Alright, so here comes EE e for X equals 3. Yeah. Alright, well there's a Vizier. And, oh, we already have Walking Ballista. Alright, that'll just do it. That's a little bit easier than trying to dig for Vizier. My opponent obviously needs to see the Ballista before they can concede here. I think they will concede if I just cast it for X equals 5. Cool. Yep, he said, just want to see it. If you play it for 1, I'll scoop. So, and, and you actually are free to do that on Magic Online because most players will concede once they see the Ballista. They can't just concede to the actual Devoted Druid itself. But once they see the Ballista, you can continue to make infinite mana and use Walking Ballista's second ability here. Uh, maybe it's first ability. It's first activated ability. Pay four mana to put a plus one plus one counter on Walking Ballista. So that'll do it. We got a free win in a potentially tough matchup. I'm really not sure. Like I said, I haven't really played against that deck too much, but it seems pretty crazy. And my music has muted here. The name of this song is Awesome, and starting out 1-0, 
is pretty awesome, especially against a deck that we just lost to not moments ago. I think I'm going to grab some water here while we wait for this queue to pop. I will be right back and then we can finish off this queue here. Sweet, back just in time. Paired for our league, rolled a six against a three. Let's be on the play, let's keep a hand with potentially a turn three combo in it. In all likelihood, if this hand is not a turn three win, it is a turn three concession. Let's just crack this. So basically, and this is this is kind of why I like this build. It makes my build a little bit sillier, but gives us the potential to grind out some long games here. The idea being that if my opponent Let's this Vizier resolve. We're going to have infinite mana. Could be a Spell Snare here. No, a Fatal Push. No, it is a Spell Snare. Okay. Well, we can Eternal Witness it back. It's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, I think I will run the Eternal Witness out there. And with another land drop, maybe I just don't even have to. I'm going to be able to cast Collected Company on my opponent's turn here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play Vizier here. We'll wait to see what we find. I'm just going to use this Eternal Witness to get back this Collected Company. Sitting on all white mana here, but should be pretty good. All right. Opponent's going to have access to three mana on this turn. So, right. Basically, now you'll see why I like the Eternal Witness over, like... Just more redundant combo pieces in a grindy game like this one potentially is. Opponent's going to path to exile Vizier on upkeep. Alright, that's not actually necessary, but it's reasonable. I could have... Actually, I couldn't have gotten a spell sky in response. This is all we can do. Mm. Yeah, my opponent could, is still representing Mana Leak, so I will just end of turn collect a company, and then if this doesn't work, and on my turn, I will cast Eternal Witness and get it back. My opponent's a Path to Exile deck, so let's just go get Overgrown Tomb and pay two life. They're also not a Lightning Bolt deck. So end step Coco, they do have Cryptic Command here. They're actually representing Cryptic Command here with the double and tapsies, but that's fine. Counter spell, draw a card. We're going to eternal witness it back and potentially try to find another window where that can resolve. Let's play a bird and an eternal witness. So right now, if I main phase the Coco, it's underneath of Snapcaster mana. So that's somewhat reasonable. Drawing both Path to Exiles is pretty awkward.
playing into Supreme Verdict here a little bit. Alright, well, they don't have Supreme Verdict. Probably should have just got Basic Forest there, to be honest. You know what? Oh, I'm an idiot. I was sh I should have Coco'd in response to that fetch land. Alright, now I'm just going to let them Snapcaster this. That seems bad, because I don't have a follow-up play. Alright, Devoted Druid seems solid, though. Continue to smack for two. Opponents don't deny now. And this is the, the thing to consider, is like, eventually these these hits for two get there. And we'll see if Devoted Druid can get there. Devoted Druid resolves, and then eats a path to exile. I already have a Devoted Druid in my graveyard. Sure, let's go and get the last basic forest. And... Let's Coco here. Let's get Eternal Witness for sure. And yeah, I'll grab Kitchen Finks. Any order of these. And then let's return Collected Company. And this is kind of the game plan. This is the go-to against these... Grixis decks. We can actually just outgrind them with our three mana green creatures. Opponent is at eight, which means we have almost lethal. Gavany Township is lethal. Walking Ballista is lethal, though Walking Ballista is on the bottom of our library. Here's a Supreme Verdict. That's fine. Uh, we're going to get back our Persister. We'll be able to put our opponent down to six. We also get to main phase a Coco here. I think it's worth going for because we could hit Anafenza Viscerous here, which would be sweet if nothing else. I'll play Verdant Catacombs first and run this out off our basics. Alright, so Kitchen Finks and Noble Hierarch actually does let us do a little bit more damage this turn as well. It means we get to hit for 3 this turn, 5 next turn, so that provided us with lethal. We might see a Snapcaster Mage on the blocks here. Nope, no Snapcaster. And we're still representing Collected Company. Which is pretty insane. Alright, my opponent's got three cards in hand. They're not doing anything. I think they are pretty likely to have a Cryptic Command here. Not that I can do anything against that. Cord is good, though. Cord means that we can get some value. So, in response to Cryptic, we're going to tap our team. No? Okay. We're going to swing for lethal. Here comes the Snapcaster Mage Path to Exile. It's three mana. Four mana. I have no idea what this is. Oh, if this is a Torrential Gear Hulk, that seems pretty insane. Blessed Alliance. So, they're going to gain four life and make a sacrifice... A Kitchen Finks, which I'm pretty happy to do. Just want to think about if in response to this here, I want to go and grab an Anafenza or something like that. Or Kitchen Finks will persist. I'll have access to one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I can Coco. So let's do that. Sacrifice this guy. My opponent also went up to nine here. They're going to go back down to 7. Think twice with flashback. Now that really makes me want to go and grab a scavenging ooze. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Alright, yeah, let's go grab scavenging ooze. My opponent's looking for a path to exile so that they can path this before blocks. Undo. Alright. X equals 2. 
Again, I could have gotten an Eternal Witness here. Duskwatch Recruiter does seem good. But Scavenging Goose is going to immediately draw me a card when I exile this Think Twice here. And it's still going to be a pretty solid card moving forward. Uh, it does give me lethal. End of turn, I'll eat my Birds of Paradise and a Devoted Druid, and that'll give me with lethal. Uh, keeps my opponent off Snapcaster Mage as a live draw. Let's eat this bird. Let's eat this Devoted Druid. Actually, I'll eat Eternal Witness to start off. Because I only have one more Eternal Witness in the deck. Okay. And let's swing for 10. Alright, here comes the Cryptic Command. No, it's a draw two cards Esper Charm. Alright. They probably should have main phased that to try to hit a Wrath of God. But here comes Path to Exile on Scavenging Ooze, assuredly. Okay, so what can we eat now? Let's eat Wrath. Let's eat Cryptic. Let's eat Blessed Alliance. Let's eat Esper Charm next. And I'm going to leave them with all four Path to Exiles in their graveyard? I suppose so. I'm not able to eat all four Paths, so might as well just leave my opponent with all of them. Path Resolves. Hit my opponent for four, down to three. Slowly getting there. Now the Snapcaster Mage is here? Damn, okay. Well, I didn't have the answer for Path Snapcaster. Uh, let's just Path this guy. I got nothing else better to do with my mana. Give my opponent a little bit more mana here. We'll get to Path one of our guys. Take... Two go down to five, and then we've got him on a two-turn clock here. No, no point using it, I suppose. And there's no reason to hang on to Birds of Paradise. My opponent doesn't have a Supreme Verdict, or they would have just used it. My opponent drew into Path to Exile Snapcaster Mage. Alright, so hit them for three, down to two, slowly but surely getting there. And then Viscerous Seer. Viscerous Seer is now also a lethal attacker itself. And here's a big Sphinx's Revelation. So forget everything else I just said. My opponent goes back up to 8. We now have them on a 3 turn clock, but you know what? I'm not feeling as solid here, believe it or not. That one timely Sphinx's Revelation getting them back in the game for sure here. Eternal Witness is definitely a start. Opponent's going to go for an upkeep Esper Charm, make me discard my hand. Uh, yeah, nothing I can do against that. You grab my last Eternal Witness, and that's a little unfortunate. Uh, I don't have command for decklist set up, but I can show it to you guys. Well, you'll see it when we sideboard. There's also a pretty similar decklist to what we're playing below the stream. If you check out the feed, there's a link to an Imager deck. It shows off a decent amount of it. Amount of it. Uh, let's sacrifice the bird. I feel like this isn't good enough anymore. 
feel like I want real cards. All right, let's sacrifice this. That's definitely not good enough. We've got more than enough mana. And Snapcaster Fatal Push? No, think twice. Think twice, Fatal Push. Uh, my opponent should... Yeah, they're going to leave open Fatal Push mana rather than Path to Exile mana. Oh no, they're going to go for Esper Charm. They still should leave open black as opposed to white because my opponent has used all four Path to Exiles this game. Check out their Exile as well. Alright, there's a creepy tar pit. My opponent's got a win condition. Horizon Canopy. Alright, let's go. I always Horizon Canopy into a land. Scavenge is going to be decent next turn. Oh, is it a Blessed Alliance? No, it's a Think Twice. Okay. My opponent's got so many cards in hand. Another Think Twice. They just tapped out for Think Twices. Well, they have Lethal next turn. That's why I actually think the land with Cycling could be good in this deck. Oh, that's so brutal. Oh, no, they didn't They didn't revolt it. I, I just realized that. They didn't revolt. Oh, my God. That means we're going to get a Gavany activation. Are they just planning on, like, blocking with Tarpid here? What if I play Anafenza pre-combat and then Gavany it? This definitely has some ways to backfire, but not that bad. Okay, just Spell Snare is fine. They do get to Ghost Quarter this land here, but not without me getting an activation out of it. Alright, well this is a lethal attack, so they've got to either block with Creepy Tar Pit, or find a Snapcaster Mage, or something. They've got six cards in hand. They could just Sphinx's Rev for all of it. They are going to just Sphinx's Rev for the whole shebang. Oh, what? Okay. Um, sure. They made seven cat tokens. They'll have to double block here. I'll kill both of their cats. And Kitchen Vinks will persist. I'm back up to 27. And then they will ghost quarter me on their turn, assumedly. Cats are a little tricky to get past. All right, opponent's going to smack me for one cat here. Down to 25. But they didn't take out my Gavany? Oh, opponent, I don't know what you're doing here, buddy. Unless their plan is to fatal push my Kitchen Finks in response to Gavany. Still, just clear Gavany out. I now have an insanely big Noble Hierarch, too. All right, so they've got to double block this guy again. They could chump block it. Alright. So I assume they're going to do something in response to my Gavany here. Snapcaster Fatal Push. Alright, they're going to try. They're going to think and think twice. One, two, three. There's the flashback. Think twice, okay. What is happening here? My opponent with 17 cards left in their deck. What a crazy game. Alright, they found something here. Snapcaster Path? No, that's 3 mana. That's going to be a Cryptic Command. Bounce Kitchen Finks. Draw a card. Okay, so... Their cat's blocking nothing. That's fine. They could Cryptic again. But not like I can play around that. They haven't shown us Mana Leak yet.
I don't know if they're playing Mana Leak or Remand here. It looks like a Mana Leak. <laughs> Thanks, Razor Roach Thicket. Okay, it's a Logic Knot. We couldn't play around that regardless, then. I was gonna say, if we get turn 15 Mana Leaked, that's pretty embarrassing. Turn 15 Mana Leak is quite the Mana Leak indeed. We've got a Noble Hierarch that can block cats. And my opponent can only play this game for 15 more turns. Alright, Snapcaster Logic Knot. Cryptic Command bouncing this Noble Hierarch could be awkward too. Looks like they're going to Sphinx's Revelation and kill themselves. If they have another Snapcaster Mage in their deck, they can definitely still win this game. They're going to leave themselves Cryptic Command, Bouncing Noble Hierarch as an out here. Alright, that's going to be the play. No, they're going for the Drawlicard ability again. Alright, well my opponent's got 8 turns to kill me. And they do not have Lethal on board. They need to find a Snapcaster Mage. Oh, here's a Fatal Push. Wow, they're running the full suite of Fatal Pushes and Path to Exiles, or at least a 3-4 split. Alright, they get to smack me for 10 here. This game should be over in short order. They could have hit me for 13 and made it a two-turn clock. They probably don't need to, though. Right, they discard some Polluted Deltas. What do we get? Collected Company off the top. They're going to Esper Charm me. In response, I'm going to cast it. Then they'll negate it. Alright, well, we two-for-one them. Our collected company still got a two-for-one. I'll take it. Are they going to remand their Esper Charm? That would be sick. Are they going to make more cats? They just cast another White Sun Zenith. Alright, good shit, opponent. You've got a White Sun Zenith. Hit us for 20 here. That'll do it. Alright, so we were playing against... Blue-White Flash... How can we begin to sideboard? Sin Collectors are going to be good. Tide Hollow Skullers are reasonable, but not insane. Fulminator Mage is just okay. Reclamation Sage is just okay. I like Scavenging Ooze. Don't like these Path to Exiles. Do like Selfless Spirit. What else do we like? Eh, I don't really like anything. I mean, they're probably going to bring in some cards that we can Abrupt Decay. Alright, let's board these in. The Kitchen Finks were good, but not insane by any stretch of the imagination. We could just board out that combo. I don't know. I might just trim on all my combos. Just board out this. And then board out a Birds of Paradise. Could board out another Birds. I don't like to trim my Mana Dudes too much. As they do still help. Viscera Seer seems pretty pointless, but... Especially when my opponent has so many one-for-one -one removal spells. Fulminator Mage is probably just fine because my opponent's a control deck. Even if they don't have Celestial Colonnades. They do have Creeping Tar Pits. Hmm. Oh, I'm dumb. They didn't have another White Sun Zenith. They had the first White Sun Zenith. White Sun Zenith shuffles back into your deck after you cast it. I don't think I need Viscerous here at all. Alright, this seems solid. Would like to play first. This hand's fine. Yeah, alright, we'll keep it. It's got the Abrupt Decay for their sideboard cards. It's definitely lacking on lands. But my opponent's not going to kill me quick. And the hand has got some powerful cards in it. If I hit my third land drop, I can Eternal Witness back this Vernon Catacombs. As a Renegade Rallyer of sorts.
do have to watch my clock here, so I'm going to start trying to play a little bit faster. Land, Birds of Paradise works. As long as my opponent doesn't have Fatal Push. They're representing Fatal Push, but not casting it. I'll crack. Hmm. Right, they could Logic Notice here. <clears throat> Seems fine. Cool. We're going to path to exile the Kitchen Finks. That sounds pretty good to me. Turn on our collected company for the following turn. So we can either play Cryptic or collect the company into Cryptic. I'm going to stop and cast this on their draw step. Um, actually, no. Upkeep's just better. All right, so we're going to cast Collect the Company on my opponent's draw step here. The one thing that we're losing out of that is the bolster triggers. But I don't really want to just run out Scavenger News into Wrath of God anyways, so... So lets them unable to cryptic command it, but still makes their mana pointless for that one turn cycle. Alright, dispel. That's fine. <clears throat> we didn't get that much value considering <clears throat> it was only a dispel. goes for an end step Esper Charm. Going to see a Wrath here? Yeah, looks like it. <clears throat> Alright, so we lose our board. It's not actually the worst thing. Just going to turn a witness back this uh, collected company for sure here. So my opponent's drawn some cards. They've gotten some two-for-ones. We're still both sitting on four cards in hand here. And they're just going to run out a Fatal Push again. End of turn. Doing nothing. Fatal Push does not work if you don't have the Revolt, but you are still allowed to cast it. Which really comes up on Magic Online the most because people don't realize that they can't cast it. Uh, this Gavity's... Definitely going to get Ghost Quartered here, or it should. Just attack. I wouldn't mind getting one use out of the Gavany. See what happens. I think they're going to Ghost Quarter us end of turn here. Oh no, they're going to Sphinx's Rev. For X equals 3. Alright, let's stop on my turn here. So let Sphinx's Rev resolve, I get priority, and then let's collect the company and find a Sin Collector or a Tide Hollow Sculler. <laughs> or both of them? Oh my gosh, that was insane. Alright. Let's... Sin Collector them first. Uh, yeah, I might want double black. I don't think it matters which one we do first. 
Yeah, let's exile Fink twice and then put a Fatal Push under Tide Hollow Sculler or the opposite way around. Which of these cards is the best? Dispel's pretty decent too. But we have to take Fatal Push. And I want to take Thin twice. So let's exile Think twice so it's gone forever completely. And then let's Sculler them and... Let's just take the Fatal Push. We could take the Dispel, in which case they've got to Fatal Push the Sculler. Anyways. No, let's just make it harder for him. Alright, so my opponent is on Dispel, nothing. And looks like they're going to let us activate Gavany Township here and hit them for a bunch. So we get to hit them for 9 and then 12 here. Seems solid to me. Alright, no blocks. Let's go for it. Don't want to play into Dispel either. I guess this sequence is pretty strong, because it just lets us do this. Alright, we're not going to have lethal next turn. Alright. Unlucky. But we still get to hit our opponent for 9 and 9, which means Polluted Delta makes this attack lethal. Not sure they wanted to crack that Polluted Delta here, then. We now have lethal attacks, and we are on to game 3. Sweet! Alright, yeah, I mean, Sync Collector Tide Hollow Sculler... Maybe the nastiest hit there off of a Fulminator Mage. We didn't see anything worth Abrupt Decaying. Is it worth dialing back on that plan then? You know, it might be. It really just might be. But we won that game with two Abrupt Decays in our hand. Let's dial it back here. This is like somewhat decent against the cats, but we also need Viscerous here. So never mind, I'm off of it. Um, let's put in another Devoted Druid. And I think just another Kitchen Finks. Might be somewhat difficult for my opponent to deal with the Kitchen Finks here. Right, my opponent's going to be on the play this game. We've got turn one bird, turn two nothing, turn three collected company. I'll keep that. Opponent has mulligan to six. And kept their six. And they also kept on top. I am just going to go ahead and get a Overgrown Tomb here. Because my opponent has so many Path to Exiles in their deck and Ghost Quarters that I should keep all of my basics in my deck. They're probably just going to Path this Scavenging is here. I think that's fine. Yep. It's a path on Scavenging Ooze. <clears throat> it might help us give us a little bit more mana to potentially play around some of their counter magic here. I don't think that's incredibly likely because my opponent still has access to, say, um, Dispel regardless. Let me just play Verdant Catacombs here, and then when my opponent cracks Polluted Delta we respond by collected companying to play around Logic Knot. Okay. Opponent didn't crack Polluted Delta. Uh, <clears throat> that kind of represents Logic Knot. I'm not sure if I can do anything about that. So what I would like to do is cord and then 
untap and Coco. So I'm just going to do nothing here. One, two, three. I can end step cord if I get the Devoted Druid out onto the battlefield. Let's hang on to Gavany Township. I kind of want to keep these lands secret. My opponent does still have Esper Charm, so I think I might want to play Horizon Canopy. But it's not like they're going to blow up my Horizon Canopy or anything. Let's just play these. I'm not under any particular pressure. The longer I wait, the bigger chance that my opponent can play a... Um, bigger Sphinx's Rev or other X spells here. Alright, so let's let this Polluted Delta uh, resolve. My opponent will probably get a tap land or play a Think Twice or something. Alright, they're going to get a tap land and then crack their second Polluted Delta, I imagine. Alright, and then let's respond with a Coco here. My opponent can have exactly Dispel, but short of that, this is going to resolve. Let's just go for value, I think, here. Grab Eternal Witness and Kitchen Finks. Say any order. Gain two life points, and then Eternal Witness back our collective company. Hard to see how we go wrong just with a... Four mana Kitchen Finks plus return your Kitchen Finks to your hand. My opponent's going to draw two cards end of turn. Try to find something live. No Supreme Verdict. We have access to a shit ton of mana now. And Vizier really helps in that regard. I feel like I should probably attack first to see where my opponent is willing to tap some of their mana. Maybe we'll see a Path to Exile on Kitchen Finks here. Alright, well nothing also makes me feel pretty good about this sequence of plays. Let's go Vizier of Remedies from Devoted Druid. Important to note, if my opponent responds with like a Cryptic Command here... All right, looks like it's a logic knot for x equals... No, they can't logic knot. What are they doing? They can't spell snare. Okay, they're going to logic knot for probably their whole graveyard. Because we can pay six right now. Wait, we can even pay seven. Oh, we just win. Yeah, so my opponent's going to tap out for logic knot, exile their entire graveyard. We're going to untap devoted druid and then add one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven mana. All right, my opponent just realized that they can't do it. Which means their Logic Knot is offline because they are not going to be able to pay for anything. So let's start by making a bunch of mana with Devoted Druid. We do potentially have the combo here, but we want a combo in response to whatever my opponent's doing. So the game plan here is to cast Collected Company... Again, if my opponent can't counter the Vizier, it looks like they were trying to counter Vizier. Wait, no, if they have these two, this two mana as well, they definitely could have countered Vizier. Interesting. I thought my opponent tapped two more mana for some reason, but no, my opponent could cast uh, Logic Knot for X equals 9. So I'm just going to make a few mana here to start off with. So that way we've got excess mana floating. Let's cast Collect the Company. Seven mana in the pool. Alright, this is going to get Dispelled. With Dispel on the stack, because I don't want them to have Snapcaster Mage mana. I'm going to cast Court of Calling for X equals... Two. Okay. Alright, and Dispel's still on the stack here. Let's activate Duskwatch Recruiter. There's no reason to let Dispel resolve right now. And we will tutor up and play a big Walking Ballista. And if my opponent has a counter magic for Walking Ballista, we'll also be able to play a bunch of Eternal Witnesses here. So we will win the game this turn. I've got five minutes to do it. 
I'm gonna let you guys listen to some license-free music while I combo off here. And we will eventually get there. I just have to make sure that I do it with enough time. Alright, let's start looking. Find that ballista. Alright, sounds good. <laughs> Alright, that'll end the game there. All we need to do typically is show our opponent walking ballista, and they're willing to pack it in. We could have also... There were some other pretty crazy things that we could do. If this was paper magic, uh, or I had like a... I mean, I guess I could have done it with a pen and paper... But we also could have drawn any card in our deck and cast it that wasn't that. So I'm trying to think where that's relevant. Like, basically we could have put... We could have drawn all the creatures and just cast them. So, like, what's interesting is every white and black mana is another creature that we could potentially cast. But also, so we had access to... to Four different white and black mana. So we could have both Sin Collectored and Tide Hollow Scullered my opponent here. That would have meant letting Dispel resolve, but that wouldn't have been a big deal. Uh, but yeah, the other thing that we could have done would have, been, would have been to stack our deck in a way that we knew what was on top, and then draw the card with Horizon Canopy. That's not really ever relevant, but it is still sweet to know about, because you do get to go through your whole deck... Like I said, that comes up more in paper, where it's a little bit easier to finagle with your opponent. And it's definitely, it's doable, because the amount of cards in your deck, the only way you wouldn't be able to do it would be if the amount of cards in your deck is divisible by three and you were out of creatures. But because we still have creatures in our deck, we could still do it. The only time, again, where that would really come up is like... Uh, I'm trying to think, even. Okay, I came up with a scenario. Um, let's say in a crazy, crazy universe, your opponent counters your walking ballista, and then they surgical extract it in response to you casting an Eternal Witness. What you would then be able to do is stack your deck so that either a Court of Calling or a Collected Company are on top of it, and then, uh, in the case of Court of or Collected Company, stack your deck again so that an Eternal Witness is on top of it, and then Eternal Witness back the Walking Ballista at instant speed to play around the Surgical Extraction and counter it. But regardless, we are 2-0 here to start off this league. Pretty sweet. Let's keep it going. I think we should be able to get in two full leagues today. Leagues generally take about two hours to complete. Which would mean this one will be done at 4 o'clock and the second one should finish us off at about 6 o'clock here. Alright, we get to be on the play. Pretty lucky. We've got turn three, not a combo, but still seems like a solid keep. And if we draw into Vizier, or if we Duskwatch into Vizier, <laughs> just try to play birds turn one off no land. Yeah, that'll go well. Yeah, we can't actually... So turn three will have access to six mana, which means we could Duskwatch, Activate, Pass. 
You can also just walking ballista for X equals three if this is an affinity deck. Oh, it is. Uh, Ornithopter is not the best card to walking ballista, but if we see some signal pests here, all right, looks like a volt scourge to start things off. Walking ballista is still very, very good against this deck. Put this into play tapped, play Devoted Druid, and then next turn we have Walking Ballista for one or two. Hopefully we can also nag a Steel Overseer here. If it's an Arcbound Ravager, it's a little bit more awkward, but... Hopefully no plating either. Alright, Basic Island. So we're against Thoughtcast Affinity. Could just be a Thoughtcast right here. Nope, it's a plating. And that plating is going to get attached to... The Vault Scourge. Sounds good. So our opponent's going to attack us for five lifelink damages here. And if we can draw a land, we're in a pretty decent spot to just blow up their board. No, we drew a Viscerous here. Well, that's pretty strong too. Viscerous here makes me want to run out Ballista and Viscerous here, I suppose. Um... What's interesting about that is I want to play the Kitchen Finks too. I guess I can't. I could Ballista for one and play Kitchen Finks, which would let me next turn Coco plus Viscerous here. But that just seems like a much worse play than Ballista-ing for two. Yeah, it's like considerably worse. So let's Ballista for two. All right. And now we can hopefully just mow my opponent down. We're going to kill this right now so that they can't use it to make mana off Springleaf Drum. We're keeping them off of an Ink Moth Nexus activation. Uh, they're actually kind of rewarded for just going for Ink Moth Nexus here. No. All right. They're going to hit us for looks like four. <laughs> so my opponent is like debating activating Ink Moth Nexus with itself. I think they're, they've got another card that they potentially want to cast. But if my opponent activates Ink Moth Nexus with their self, and yeah, because we killed the Vault Scourge already, my opponent is denied a mana. All right, another Springleaf Drum and an attack for four here. So on my turn, I could actually just pump all my mana in Ballista and pass. And to be honest, I kind of like that play. Yeah, let's put a counter on Walking Ballista. Smack my opponent for three and pass the turn. Find it a little bit difficult to see exactly how we lose just by going all in with Ballista here. What's funny is we won the game with an artifact and then we're going to board in Stony Silence, but this is pretty solid. All right, Arcbound Ravager is a little bit of a tricky one against Ballista. Another Springleaf Drum, okay. Do I want to block with bird here? So let's see, if my opponent plays another creature next turn and another land, no, I think we're safe. My opponent can't sack things to Arcbound Ravager because if they do, uh, they, they lose their things just as quickly. Oh, you know what? I should have tried to ping Arcbound Ravager with that damage on the stack. This is fine, though. Uh, collected Company, if we hit Vizier, we get to play Kitchen Finks for free. Seems like it should be good enough. All right, let's go for that. So we're looking for Vizier here. 
Not much else. If my opponent has a Galvanic Blast, that would be crazy. Galvanic Blast the Druid in response. But they would certainly want to Galvanic Blast this Birds of Paradise, right? Yeah, if we hit Vizier, we've got infinite mana immediately. We can play Kitchen Finks. Uh, we also have just infinite mana with Walking Ballista. And Duskwatch Recruiter activations. Pretty insane if we hit a Vizier. We hit Kitchen Finks, Duskwatch Recruiter. Well, that's still not that bad. From this spot, we are likely not dead to a... Um, we're likely not dead to my opponent's attacks because I can gain more life in response. Yeah, I don't think my opponent has any attacks that can really kill us here. I'm just considering trying to kill Ravager right now. All that really does is make my opponent sacrifice two Springleaf Drums, which are already irrelevant. So, I guess we don't have any good attacks or anything here. We're just on Birds of Paradise Chump Block, and then next turn we're going to try to Duskwatch Recruiter for a Vizier, and then if we... So, we need... Okay, they do have a Galvanic Blast here. Alright, let's Sacrifice... It's a little bold. Collected Company lets us now look at the top six cards of our deck. Potentially a little more even as, as we can sacrifice some dudes before we do that. Alright, let's put this on top. So what I'll do here now is I'll go Collected Company, hold priority... Sacrifice a few of my guys. I'll sacrifice Duskwatch Recruiter, Kitchen Finks. Could even sacrifice Viscerous here. Alright, looks like I'm going to have to sacrifice Kitchen Finks anyways. Oh no, this just isn't going to be enough. No, this will be enough here. Because I can ping off these guys. Which will shrink the Ornithopter again. Wait, can I? What happens if I ping these guys off? They're going to sacrifice them to Arcbound Ravager, and then they're just going to put the Ravager counters back on Ornithopter, but that'll leave them one short, right? Yeah, they sacrifice this. No, because this could count as a counter in the same way. So what happens if I just try to kill the Ornithopter? Maybe my opponent will mess up. Well, if I ping this twice, all they have to do is sacrifice the Arcbound Ravager. This guy continues to hit me for nine. I think my opponent's got it here, and I don't think that there's any way we can interact with this. The Galvanic Blast was pretty, pretty clutch. Alright, so they're going to go for that. That shrinks this down to 8. Yeah. Then they're just going to sacrifice the Arcbound Ravager at the end of this and put these counters onto Ornithopter. Yeah, so they can pump this guy back up to 9. And it'll be Xaxes, actually, so pretty close game. Alright, no blocks. Hopefully they decide to play around Slaughter Pact here. 
Nope, they're going to go for it. It's going to give it three plus one plus one counters. Yeah, and they'll hit me for nine. All right. That was a close one. I'm not sure there was anything I could have done. We definitely had a lot of lines, though, so there was probably something that I could have done that changed that up a little bit. I'm not super sure. Definitely want all my spot removal spells, my stony silences, my reclamation sage, and my fulminator mage and spell skite are even pretty good, too. Scavenging news I don't love. Court of Calling is a little bit slow. Walking Ballista Strong. Oh, and I want Wars of Pontiff, too. So, yeah, there's a decent amount that I want here. I think I can board out a Vizier. I can board out a Kitchen Finks. Probably board out some more Cords here. They're good, but I think I can still board them out at the same time. My opponent might have Whip Flare. I'm not sure if I want to play around Whip Flare at all. Might just want Tide Holo Sculler. So if I block with the birds, then my opponent will just Galvanic Blast my Devoted Druid. And then I'm actually in the same spot. So I don't think that actually would have done that much for me, but yeah, that was the that was the one clear contentious point. The other thing was the turn that I. The turn that I just sunk all my mana into Walking Ballista to make it a 2-2 turned out to not be that great. Yeah, but I need to Coco with a Devoted Druid in play. I think that play was actually fine. I want to keep in some number of combo pieces here, though, still. I'm not sure if I can board in the Sin Collectors. Could take out Duskwatch Recruiter. I do just have less combo pieces in general right now. I mean, Stony Silence is fantastic, so we're, we are just kind of leaning on Stony Silence. Fulminator Mage is good because when you gain infinite life, one of the only ways that they can interact is Infect. So you kind of take them off the Infect plan. I guess I'll board out Duskwatch Recruiter. It's a little slow. It does still let us combo. I do still want access to Walking Ballista. Uh, just because it's a good card against their traditional game plan. Turn 1, Birds of Paradise. Turn 2, Vizier. Turn 3, Coco, if we hit a land. I think we can do better. Sand's solid, but I think we can do better, especially with Stony Silence in the deck. Sand is pretty mediocre here. About as mediocre as we can get. But we're going to hope Reclamation Sage just wins us the game here. It's a fine draw. We've got the mana to cast the Collected Company, and then we can even go ahead and get it back, so I guess I'll draw Collected Company here. Sand's super slow, though. Okay, signal passed for my opponent. We get to a Windswept Teeth. Hopefully we get to blow up a Steel Overseer here, but I will settle for a Ravager. What I don't want to target is a Dark Steel Citadel, though, for sure. All right. This is fine. We're essentially going to get one for ones off Ravager. It's also going to get to pump their Signal Pest 1. They're not going to eat any lands here, though. And they're also not clocking us, so that's pretty sweet, too. Now if we draw a path to exile or something, our opponent's got nothing. Cranial Plating still represents a lot of damage here. If my opponent goes Citadel Cranial Plating, they get to smack us for six. <laughs> I don't know why I also let them have a Dark Steel Citadel. But I just knew that's what it was going to be. 
All right. So I'd love to eternal witness back this reclamation sage. However, it's impossible. Uh, suppose we are just casting a collected company here. Birds of Paradise will buy us a block. Steel Overseer, all right, that's something for us to pontiff. And Signal Pest, that's something for us to pontiff. Even Mind Sensor would be a sweet hit, except I don't think I've got access to it. All right, let's just hit an Orzhov Pontiff. That'll be good enough. Just Vizier. Oh, that was brutal. Putting a lot of sweet cards on the bottom of our deck here. Taking six, going down to seven. My opponent's got lethal next turn. I can chump block with Birds of Paradise to break up some part of that. Uh, you know what? I guess we're in an all right spot. No, it looks like my opponent has Galvanic Blast as well. well. If my opponent has Galvanic Blast for Vizier, then we're really, really in a shit spot. Because they'll just be able to Galvanic Blast the bird here. So I actually really want them to Galvanic Blast this Vizier. I want to untap and draw Devoted Druid. That's the best draw in my deck. Because it will potentially bait out my opponent blowing up the Vizier. And then on main phase 2 I'll play the Birds of Paradise to chump block the Signal Pest. Then on my following turn... I'll be able to Eternal Witness out a Vizier and then Eternal Witness out Collected Company. And hopefully that's enough. Uh, Stony Silence also acceptable here. My opponent's thinking long and hard about this Galvanic Blast. Maybe they have Galvanic Blast and Thoughtcast. Oh, it's a Pithing Needle. All right, well, you just named Devoted Druid, buddy. Walking Ballista? That'd be sweet. We can beat that. We can beat any name here. They named Viscera Seer. That is also a pretty reasonable name and one that I was thinking they might use. Path to Exile. That seems fantastic, eh? Unfortunately, there's two cards that I need to cast it on. Hmm. If I just take them off this Signal Pest, they just... Well, I'd path to Exile in combat. You know what? This might actually be great. Next turn, I'm going to have enough mana to Eternal Witness back the Path to Exile. So this might actually be enough. What gets really awkward here is if my opponent just swings. <laughs> oh god. If my opponent just swings with Steel Overseer as a 3-1, that would be hilarious. Alright, Master of Ethereum. Oh, they might do it. Oh, what if? All right, they're going to put Cranial Plating on the other Signal Pest. That makes sense. It distributes their damage just a little bit better here. Please, just the pests. Okay, cool. So this pest is only going to swing for three. No, they saw it. Okay, well, we're going to lose our Birds of Paradise here. What do we need to hit? Yeah, we pretty much need to gain infinite mana, and Pithy Needle takes us off of that. Maybe Path to Exile. I don't know. We need to draw an untapped forest or plains. 
Yeah, I shouldn't have swung with my guys, for sure. If I didn't swing with my guys, I could have just pathed here and kept my Birds of Paradise. It's potentially worth not even showing them Path to Exile here, but... I'm not dead. I'm gonna drop down to one, or two, rather. If I hit Kitchen Finks, Kitchen Finks off of a collected company, we're still in it. Mm. Okay. Oh, that was the whole match? Oh, well. All right, we're 2-1. I guess they won game one real quickly, didn't they? Oh, they just won both games. What am I even talking about? Sorry, sometimes you play too much magic and you start to... All the games start to bleed together a little bit. Everything's starting to bleed together just a tiny little bit, but <clears throat> we're 2 1, and that's what's important. We have one loss. Don't actually think Affinity is that bad of a matchup, but Galvanic Blast out of an otherwise uninteractive deck. Piffing Needle was doing some work too. Not that it actually stopped anything, but it's a sweet card. They can also have Rest in Peace. Affinity is cool because it's a five color deck, so. They really have access to anything in their sideboard. They even make use of green mana every once in a while for Ancient Grudge. When the deck is popular enough that the mirror matches abound. How's everybody doing today? How was your Mother's Day, everybody? Don't recognize any of the names. Mathematics. Recognize you. But. Everybody else looks like a new. A new watcher here. Alright, we lost the die roll. We are going to be on the draw then for this game. And seems solid. We've got the mana to cast everything in our hand. If we can hit a Vizier, we win. I like both of those things. All right, blue-white control. That might mean that we are just too fast. Path to Exile, a pretty horrible draw. But yeah, maybe we'll just be too fast. Seems unlikely. Ooh, Jeskai Control, sweet. <clears throat> Jeskai Control with no red mana, even better. Jeskai means we do have to watch our life total a little bit here, but not too much. Uh, there's a lot of different builds of Jeskai Control. I have a deck list that is pretty similar to mine down in the posts below. But I make a few changes here and there, so it's not 100% up to date, the current deck list below. 
Does Squatch Recruiter battles with Geist of St. Traft while also being a good on-curve play? The one change that I made to the deck uh, today, I kind of want to put an Anafenza in the deck, so I put one in, move the Spell Skite to the sideboard, and cut the Voice of Resurgence. It's really the only change. Anafenza, the two-mana one, the one that's a Malira. Alright, yeah, let's go Verdant Catacombs. <clears throat> let's grab a Forest. And let's play Duskwatch Recruiter here. So, even if we hit Vizier, our plan is to try to trade into Geist here. Opponent could have Restoration Angel or <clears throat> a number of other things that mean our Duskwatch Recruiter either isn't going to die or would have died anyways. Yeah, let's block first. So if they Resto, that's pretty good for us. <clears throat> that means Vizier and we win. I almost didn't activate. That would have been really bad. Sure, we'll grab another Devoted Druid. <clears throat> Not the best hit. Would have much rather had that Court of Calling, but we'll take it. And then we're going to see, like, a Lightning Bolt or Path to Exile on my Duskwatch Recruiter post-combat here. Or post-blocks. Lightning Helix on Devoted Druid. You know what? <clears throat> I don't hate that either. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Uh, my opponent already knows we have another Devoted Druid, so it's actually a little bit strange that they would do something like that. Because now we get to just play this Devoted Druid again. My opponent doesn't have a Geist, so they're not clocking us. And we get to play another Devoted Druid. Now, you kind of have to kill a Devoted Druid anyways, but... Yeah, I can't, can't say I am too upset with this. We are going to see a Lightning Helix here. Oh, I shouldn't have ever let the first Lightning Helix resolve. That was my fault. You are supposed to counter Lightning Helix by shrinking your Devoted Druid in response. That way your opponent doesn't gain 3 life. So my opponent should be at 18 right now. We'll see if it matters. Uh, it's not super likely to matter. And I'm just going to Eternal Witness and replay a Dusk Watch here. I guess I did have to make green mana there. Return Dusk Watch, and I'm just going to tap out and play him. I can't get basic planes off of Windswept Heath, but I'm not likely to path to exile this Snapcaster Mage here yet, anyways. Actually, I am kind of likely to. Well, my opponent doesn't have any cards in the graveyard. All right. I don't know what this attack means for my opponent. If it means they just have a wrath effect or what have you. That might just be the case. They don't have Culligan's Command in their deck. Alright, they're going to Lightning Helix this again. That's fine. I'm just going to crack this now. We're kind of out of gas here. We need to draw something. We've used up a lot of resources already. Kitchen Finks seems solid, though. And I'll just play Viscerous here as well. So let's, let's just play around future Lightning Helixes. It's not doing anything in my hand. Alright, Ghost Quarter is a little bit annoying because Gavany Township would have been a sweet draw. Probably going to draw Horizon Canopy into Gavany Township. Nope, just Devoted Druid. Alright, let's smack... Four. Four. Opponent at 24 again. They should be at 21 right now. And now should be at 17.
And that's going to be a lightning bolt on Devoted Druid. Let's scry one in response. And see if we can find a collected company or something sweet. Scavenging Ooze is something sweet. I will keep that one. So now we might see like a path to exile from our opponent. I am going to attack first here. If my opponent has a Snapcaster Mage, they have a Snapcaster Mage. We only really get punished ever if they play a Restoration Angel, which I believe my opponent is playing a Restoration Angel deck here. All right, it is a Snapcaster Mage, but like I said, I don't really think we get that punished for this. This they can block and then kill Finks post combat with a Lightning Bolt. All right, so what did they target? They targeted Lightning Helix. They're going to trade with Viscerous here. I'm going to let that happen. And then they have a Lightning Helix. I'm going to play Scavenging Ooze. If they try to Lightning Helix the Ooze, then we'll just eat two creatures. Eat both of their Snapcaster Mages. I guess I'll eat Lightning Helix here. <clears throat> I don't really care. They can cast Lightning Helix. So if I'd played Scavenging Use pre-combat, they would have gone Snapcaster Mage, target Lightning Helix. Uh, Alright, they're going to Lightning Helix the Kitchen Finks, that's fine. Yeah, if I play Scavenging Goose pre-combat, they go Snapcaster Mage, target Lightning Helix. Alright, so first let's eat their Lightning Bolt, keep them off of... Then we don't have to worry about anything weird happening here. Then let's eat all their Snapcaster Mages. Then... I don't know, should I keep one more mana open? I kind of feel like I might want to. Nah, let's just eat this. I think we're good. Scavenging news might get like Path to Exiled or something, but... Seems like the Ooze is in a solid spot. My opponent has Celestial Colonnade mana open now. But I don't know, do I just beat with Ooze? Yeah, I kind of don't want them to just eat the Finks for free. Oh wait, we have Path to Exile with no other targets for it. Let's swing with both. Right, my opponent's going to say no blocks. Let's eat some cards here. We can eat these Devoted Druids. I don't think I have any more use for those. My opponent can't F6 just because of Desolate Lighthouse, but I do think they're done playing for this turn, at least. Alright, let's just stop with that. I'm going to keep open one green mana still with Scavenging Ooze, just in case. Now my opponent's going to Lighthouse. Look for something good. They're going to draw a card, discard a card. It's a Flooded Strand. Well, that's good, because I can let them have a Flooded Strand. We hit them for 10, put them down to 10. And I'll play my 4th Devoted Druid. <clears throat> Don't think it's going to be relevant this game, but you can, with Devoted Druid, uh, also have it kill itself just so that you've got more Scavenging Ooze fodder. They're going to Lightning Helix the Devoted Druid. Let's counter that Lightning Helix again. So we've now denied 6 life from my opponent. Again, we should have denied 9 life from my opponent, but they could be at 16 right now, which would still leave us with lethal here. But Hmm... 
All right, pretty sure we just attack with both of our creatures for 10 and see what happens. Got the Path to Exile. We've got the Scavenging Ooze. That should lock it up. All right, we're going to see a Scalding Tarn and probably for Mountain if they have one, yeah. And then we're going to see Desolate Lighthouse look for Path to Exile. Lightning Helix targeting Kitchen Finks. All right, that's going to gain them some life points here. Well, let's think. This taps them out. Right now, I only have to eat one more creature and Scavenging Ooze is lethal. If Kitchen Finks goes to the graveyard, my opponent's going to gain three, go up to 12, which means I have to eat four more creatures, which I can do. One, two, three, four. Just considering pathing my own kitchen things here. I'm going to let this go to the graveyard, and then I'm going to eat my own graveyard. Devoted Druid. I now have all four Devoted Druids in my deck exiled. Viscera Seer. And... Eternal Witness. And, alright, we're attacking for 12. A 12-12 scavenging is good enough. Path to Exile. Wow, okay, a 12-12 scavenging ooze got there. That's crazy. That is the biggest scavenging ooze I have seen in a long time. But against a deck that is mono lightning bolts, it is pretty good. And against a deck that is mono lightning bolts, we definitely want access to Spellskite here. So Spellskite's good. The next biggest thing to keep in mind is we just want blockers. Scavenging Ooze, you earned your keep. I'm definitely going to board in another one of those. Sin Collector and Tide Hollow Skull are also, are also fantastic cards in this matchup. Part of the opponent's game plan is to just hit you with a Geist of St. Traft while tempoing you out, but we've got so many, like Kitchen Finks is so good against Geist of St. Traft, it's really not even funny. We can probably board out an offense, so we probably don't need that. My opponent showed a real willingness to kill Devoted Druid. Uh, there's an interesting thing I talk about with Legacy Elves sometime. So, Heritage Druid just has like this big, this big flag that it's holding. It's almost a flag bearer in that it is just like, hey, come kill me. Even though it's not actually technically right to kill Heritage Druid more than half the time, Devoted Druid kind of has that same stigma, except you should kill Devoted Druid every single time you see one. Um, so Heritage Druid, I sometimes like to... Like, I say that I'll keep them in because they're just so good at eating up removal spells. Devoted Druid's good at eating up removal spells, but it costs two mana and you're trading it for removal spells that cost one and two, so it's not as fantastic as the other way around. Fulminator Mage does seem pretty solid here. We can blow up their Ghost Quarters, we can blow up their Desolate Lighthouses, and we can blow up their Celestial Colonnades. Don't really think I want anything else. I don't think I want Orzhov Pontiff. Oh, we do definitely want Selfless Spirit, though, right? Uh, not actually sure we do. Burned and Forge Center would be a lot better. I don't know if my opponent's going to have Wrath Effects, but we'll board it in regardless. I'm just going to board out Viscerous here. I think we can board out a bird. Board out either a Devoted Druid or a Kitchen Finks. Or just a Vizier. Yeah, let's just board out a Vizier. It's the worst card. And I don't think I want anything else. Reclamation Sage is probably pretty good against whatever they're bringing in against us. But I like this. So I put Anafenza in the main deck and I cut it every single game, but that's because we're playing against good stuff decks every single game. Whereas if we played against something where I really just want infinite life combo, 
Which maybe Affinity was that. Maybe I did just want Infinite Life. I kind of forget my sideboard plan against Affinity. Maybe I board out... No, I don't board out the Eternal Witnesses. I think I board out Kitchen Finks against Affinity because all the creatures fly anyways. It's good to be able to combo, but... It's not good enough for the not combo. Alrighty, opponent is deciding whether they want to play or draw, which should be a pretty easy consideration here. So, I don't know if they are AFK or on scavenging ooze tilt from losing to a 12-12, but either way. Alrighty, we get our first look at our hand here. Looks like a mulligan to me, no green mana, and Spellskite is the only card we can cast. Then we see a hand that is turn one Noble Hierarch. Our opponent kept seven. We'll keep this. Uh, do I want Basic Forest? Uh, no, I might be a little bit greedy. Opens us up to just like a Bolt the Bird plan for my opponent here, but... We're probably going to draw more lands anyways. What do we want to cord for? There's nothing great to cord for. Really just like Sin Collector. That's our best just value card. All right. That's a pretty good land to draw, Gavany Township. Keep is Noble, Noble, Eternal Witness Cord, and two lands for those... Following along at work. <laughs> I think that's a pretty common thing. I know I know. I keep streams on in the background. And you don't always pick up all of the information. But having some of the plays be like talked out just a little bit more sometimes does help. I'm going to see an upkeep bolt bird. Or my opponent just wants to have stops on my upkeep for no reason. I'm not sure. My play here is just going to be Windswept Heath, Noble Hierarch, Smack for two. Not doing anything too crazy just yet. We will have to play something if my opponent plays a Geist. So I'm not really looking forward to that. Hoping my opponent is more just on a Snapcaster Mage plan. My plan here is going to be Smork It Up, baby. Let's go face. Alright, let's yield to these Noble Hierarch triggers. I think auto yielding to one of them auto yields to both, right? Yeah, okay, cool. I did board out all my removal spells, which could be really bad against Restoration Angel. Resto's tricky, though, because you kind of want to Resto the Snapcaster in response, and then you also kind of want to path the Resto. Smack and whack him. Alright, so looks like my opponent is going for some Geist of Saint Traft action here. I'd have to imagine only one blue mana here. Oh no, Anger of the Gods. Alright, well that's fine too, actually. It's actually why I board out most of my mana dudes. Because they're not great against Anger. It also explains my opponent's fetch land choice of only having one island in play. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to go for Eternal Witness back to fetch land here. 
It's just going to let me cast Coco next turn. I don't actually think we lost that much with the Anger. It was a two for one, and we did already mulligan, but we're on the draw, which means we're up a card, and we've got a lot of other card advantage engines in the deck. My opponent is stuck on three mana. That's pretty interesting. Let's see what happens when Eternal Witness attacks. I think it's going to get through. What do I do if my opponent just Lightning Bolts Eternal Witness here? Do I play Scavenging Ooze? Alright, it's just not going to happen. No point discussing crazy hypotheticals here. It's always important to consider that this deck can just go on the counter burn plan. We're going to go for an end step. Uh, cord here. I don't know if I want to get... Oh, I can't get Swamp. Yeah, and I don't want Godless Shrine. Alright, Basic Forest it is. And Step Collected Company. This deck is typically pretty light on things like Remand and Mana Leak, so I think Collected Company is going to resolve. Postboard, we could see a Dispel. No, we're going to see a Negate Postboard. Okay, that's fine too. We can Court of Calling for X equals 2... Go get Devoted Druid. That's about all we can do, though. Uh, you know what else we can do is we can play Scavenging Ooze and just eat Anger of the Gods and eat Negate. Well, not a great Scavenging Ooze. It is still a Scavenging Ooze. Yeah, I think my opponent's doing fine on mana. This deck actually doesn't need... Oh, I just f 6 through my second turn. Or second main phase and didn't play a Razor Ridge Thicket. Oh. That might help them get back into it. Just not playing a Razor Ridge Thicket. I was reading the comments and uh, f 6 I blame you. I blame you, Ixidor's Dreams. This deck can operate and cast every spell in their deck on 4 mana, though, likely, so... Shouldn't be as big of a deal. Colonnade's the only thing that they need six mana for. Alright, they don't have that much going on either. We're going to see an upkeep Vendillion click targeting us. We'll see that we didn't play our Razor Verge Thicket. That's fine, I think. <laughs> We actually just baited them into Vendillion clicking us here. Could honestly see them Vendillion clicking themselves. Like if I don't play anything, what could I have? Yeah. That's fine. Fulminator Mage, pretty shit draw. No blocks here. Just gonna put them down to 10 at least. So we got that going for us. Flooded Strand in response to Scavenging Ooze. Not sure what that means. Uh, I guess they have a Mana Leak? Oh, they just have straight up Spell Snare. Okay. All right, I may have punted this one, but we're up a game. So hopefully uh, we don't get too punished here. My opponent can now... We can't really attack into Celestial Colonnade here. Unless we draw something real good. But the other side of that is we do have Gavany Township. All right, here's a Geist. No, Resto. Targeting Vendillion Click. They're going to let us keep Fulminator Mage here. And they are targeting me with this. Oh, they took my Fulminator Mage and gave me a Coco. Holy moly. All right, well, that's an avenue to victory. Let's cast Coco while my opponent's tapped out here. 
<laughs> Come and get it, buddy. Duskwatch Recruiter. Duskwatch Recruiter or Selfless Spirit Devoted Droid? Here's the Godless Shrine that I also could have drawn, but I'm really surprised my opponent just decided to take me off of this. Oh, you know why? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They're really close. Maybe I just need to take Devoted Druid here. Try to hit the Vizier and win. My opponent can hit me for 6 plus 10 in the air. All right, let's take one Devoted Druid so that we've got some combo potential. We also don't need a second Duskwatch Recruiter. So what's going to happen here is my opponent's going to cast no spells, just attack us for a bunch of damages, and flip our Dusk Watch. We're going to go double activate on upkeep. Ooh, Cracking Scalding Tarn. What does that mean? I think that means they want to F6. <laughs> this is just Colonnade here, right? Yep, Colonnade, and then my opponent's going to have... Lightning Helix mana available. So maybe they do have a Lightning Helix. And they wanted to bash. Well, we're dead to Lightning Helix or Lightning Bolt. I think they might have it. They go. We go down to three. And do we see a main phase two Helix? Yeah, we do. All right. Well played. They found the line. Lightning Helix targeting me, I imagine. Yep, that'll do it. So I could have taken the Selfless Spirit to protect against that, but... I would have had to draw then a very specific sequence of cards to get back into it after that. I don't think I'm going to change this up at all. It looks like yeah, our deck pretty much did what we needed it to do. We played into Anger a little bit hard, but be on the play this game. We've got Selfless Spirit and Spellskite to protect our Devoted Druid. This hand seems great. We'll see the key use of flag bears in this. Yeah, it was it was clearly um, lightning helix there because they cracked their fetch land. Yeah, if I'd taken selfless spirit, um, the problem is, yeah, I would have had to coco into exactly vizier eternal witness. I go Vizier, Eternal Witness. Uh, oh, I might not have even have had a cord in my graveyard. Yeah, I don't think I could have won if I had done that. Spell Snare would be really unfortunate, but just hopefully they don't have it. Spell Skate is insane against this deck, so hopefully they don't have it. Damn it! Oh, <gasps> they don't! Woo, baby! All right, that means Devoted Druid is alive and well. Thank you very much. And we have a backup Devoted Druid, even so. All right, this hand's looking good. Spell Snare, I guess, is always online. So there's not that much we can celebrate here. But if they counter this Devoted Druid, then we still have a backup one. I guess Spell Snare is the only card that we... Spell Snare is the only card that we don't, uh, or that really stops us now. Because Spell Sky blinks every other card in their deck. Geist of St. Traft would be decent, but we've got a collected company, so I'm not even sweating, sweating that. Vendillion Click will take our collected company. That seems like a pretty good one. Pretty good card to take. I'll redirect that to Spell Sky. All right, and we get a Temple Garden for our efforts. I'll shuffle that Collected Company back in. Hopefully put that on the top of the deck. And draw it right here. No, Noble Hierarch. Okay. Well, that's not the absolute worst. I think I'm going to start Gavinying next turn. With Selfless Spirit, I'm pretty free here. Yeah, let's just go Noble Hierarch. Let's swing for one. Because that attacks free. 
And my opponent might have an anger. If they do, they're going to try to bait it out by attacking with Vendillion Click. We are not going to block. We are also not going to F6 ever. I'm going to play the Windswept Teeth. This takes us off a of Fulminator Mage, but it protects our life total just a little bit more. Then I think it's worth it. And we're just going to start Gavineying here with backup for Anger of the Gods. So now we can fully commit to Gavany and keep our life total high so that we don't randomly lose to Vendillion Click plus Lightning Bolts because, like I said, we're not going to be blocking Vendillion Click here ever. Maybe I could have just played Temple Garden last turn and kept the fetch land, but that's fine. All right, well, gavin has gone. See you, Gavini. This does let us get a basic swamp for Fulminator Mage. In case we draw that, then we can cut our opponent off of red or white mana. I'll choose red for anger specifically, but they have a Geist follow-up as well. They have Electrolyze, Guaranteed Killing, Selfless Spirit. Um, that's how that works, right? Because they already targeted... Spell Skite, I can't change the target. Alright, let's just make our team indestructible. And something good. Tidello Scholar is pretty good. Uh, it's still reasonably protected, and we can take their anger here if they have one. Five cards in hand for opponent. They've got Lightning Bolt, another Vendillion Click, and a Restoration Angel. Well, we're protected against Lightning Bolt. I can just redirect the Spell Skype. I should not have tapped my Noble Hierarch. That was silly. Um, so yeah, let's just take Restoration Angel. We're going to leave them with Vendillion Click Lightning Bolt. And we will get in there with Spell Skype. Yeah, definitely mistapped there. We're, like, decently racing our opponent. Oh, God. So if we attack with Tide Hollow Skuller here, it actually seems kind of reasonable to me. What would happen is we would Tide Hollow Skuller, they would Vendillion Click, they would trade Vendillion Click for Skuller, they would get back their Restoration Angel. But they would lose both of their Vendillion Clicks just to trade for Skuller. Like, I feel like that's actually okay. I don't know. I just I just have it on random a random YouTube playlist today. I feel like this outcome wouldn't be that great for our opponent. Now, if they drew a Restoration Angel, that would be really dumb. Wow. Okay. Restoration Angel, Vendillion Click. They're going to Vendillion Click. They might even just target themselves this time. They know they have two dead cards in hand. They're going to target me. That's fine. That's why I didn't play my land. And then they're going to get to eat up the Tide Hole of Skuller, get back their other Resto. They know I've got nothing in hand to prevent this. Alright, Coco can still win me the game. My opponent is on Lightning Bolt, Vendillion Click, Restoration Angel. So they're going to swing for 6 here. On my draw step, they're going to click me means I've got no outers other than Collected Company. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. I can also... Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Vizier. 
Sure. Okay. I can also cord into a Duskwatch and then hit Vizier off the first three cards. That'll do it too. So Cord or Coco, I will cast in response as well. Those are also my only live draws, so my opponent isn't really even that rewarded for Vendillion clicking me here. It's like they're not going to. Yeah, they went in on the dude's plan. I guess I should have kept in some Path to Exiles. Resto's so strong. Yeah, I'm just going to play Kitchen Finks. They're going to let it resolve and play another Restoration Angel and kill me. And that'll do it. Making sure not to F6 here so my opponent can't just end of turn bolt me. Yep, Resto. Click yourself, get rid of your Vendillion click. And smash for nine. Good game, well played. I lose. All right, two, two. We won the first two, lost the second two. Here is the finals, effectively. Not really, but if we win this game, we win some packs. We break even. We break even if we win. And... <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the chat's chat's kind of popping off here. Pretty, pretty annoying. All right, you're unbanned. <laughs> Here we go. Here's our match. Lost the die roll for the finals here. Got the turn three company. Let's keep. Our opponent molded to six. That's pretty good. Our opponent molded to five. Debating whether to mold a four. Oh, this is looking good. They're debating whether to mulligan into three. All right, they kept their four card hand. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, if they're playing like the mirror match, let's not underestimate them here. They can definitely still win. We'll path their Tarmogoyf here, maybe? Oh, Duskwatch Recruiter. Mm. It's going to give them the mana to cast whatever they want, but I am going to path their guy here. So this might turn on like a collected company for them, which could be bad, but... They could also just play a land and hit off Duskwatch. Yeah, definitely not Dredge. Definitely the Mirror matchup. And the Mirror matchup can win still. Just If they just go land Coco next turn, they are still kind of killing it. So let's not underestimate them here. And we also give them white mana. I think we'll probably just see like a Kitchen Finks here. Another Duskwatch. Alright. Did they have the land? They did have the land. Okay. 
So, rewarded, I guess? Yeah, because they had all the mana. What, are they going to play a Devoted Druid as well? No, they are all in on the Dusk Watches. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Um, debating if I want to just flip their Dusk Watches now. That seems reasonable. I flip their Dusk Watches. They'll activate on combat. They'll swing at us for six. I'll Coco. All my Finxes are in hand, though, is what makes that play awkward. If they activate a Dusk Watch one time, they're just going to be able to play a Mana Dude that they draw. Alright, I'm off it. Let's play... Question then is, do I want to play a Kitchen Finx or a Collected Company? I think I do just want to play a Collected Company here. If I'm going to play a Collected Company, I might as well main phase it. Get the Vizier. Get the Dusk Watch. Say any order, and that should be enough for my opponent to concede here. If they're playing the same deck, they know what's up. That's a pretty good collected company. Might as well main phase it. What do you guys say? <laughs> yeah. Go for the main phase Coco. So, I like Skuller reasonably. We are in the... We're playing against an all-in version of the deck, which means they might not even use the graveyard, but they're definitely going to have Tide Hollow's Skuller in there. And we are definitely going to want removal spells for their Devoted Druids. If we can keep them off Devoted Druids and Duskwatch Recruiters, we can win. Ava Mind Sensor is also great in the mirror. And Orzhov Pontiff is decent based off what type of mirror matchup it is. Infinite Life doesn't do anything for us. Let's board out our Infinite Life combo. I do still like Viscerous here. And we'll keep in one Kitchen Finks just to have it. Selfless Spirit, we don't need access to. Spell Skite, we don't really need access to. We do want Walking Ballista. I feel like the fact that we saw three Duskwatch Recruiters, now was that was the only cards that we saw from our opponent. But I feel like we could board out a little bit of our Scavenging Ooze game plan here. Maybe we just only play the one. Even Mind Sensor, Orzo Pontiff, and Removal Spells is really the key. Hmm. Let's board out all the Kitchen Finks, because I can't think of what else to do here. So it's either a bird, a sculler, or a cord. I think I like the cord, especially because my opponent isn't going to have that much interaction against us either. I like the Eternal Witness, definitely. I'm going to just board out a bird. I like the Vizier. Alright, let's go for this. So I did keep in a Viscera Seer and no Kitchen Finks, which I think is a little bit interesting. But um, I don't know what deck list you're talking about there. All right, our opponent mold to six. We've got the turn three win. They're gonna stop and keep six cards though. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean. Right. They're not on, like, the Simeon Spirit Guide list. We saw that they had black mana, but the fact that they have three Duskwatch Recruiters does mean that they're potentially a little bit heavier on the combo, which could mean that they are a little bit lighter on uh, the, the graveyard plan. And it's interesting, like, if I'm porting out all my Kitchen Finks, but then I'm keeping in a Scavenging Ooze to, like, get their graveyard. Now, I do think Scavenging Ooze is still pretty great against, like, Eternal Witness and the like. But it is interesting to, like, board in Graveyard Hate and then board out your main Graveyard Interaction in the mirror. My opponent going with Theros Basic Lands. And a Devoted Druid means we might just be dead. If I draw a kill spell, I will cast it. All right. Looks like we're playing Godless Shrine here, and we are going to lose because we're on the draw. 
Sounds good to me. My opponent could board in Restoration Angels here. Restoration Angel would not be a great play. They could go Restoration Angel, blink their Devoted Druid to reset the counter. All my opponent really needs is a Court of Calling or a Vizier plus something else. And just like we have, a Vizier and a Court of Calling. And that's enough to do us in. They could have a kill spell of their own, which would be pretty interesting. All right, three mana and a fourth mana. We're going to see Coco try to hit a Vizier here. Coco hit Duskwatch Recruiter, Birds of Paradise. GG well played. My opponent could have a land drop and a Path to Exile here. They do not... So, we win. That's all she wrote. My opponent will concede once they see the Duskwatch Recruiter here. But just got to get enough mana to cast it. X equals 2. That'll do it. And that'll do it. So that makes us 3-1 here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> doesn't feel like we did that much. We just had the turn 3 combo and they did not. But sometimes that's all you need. So here is the list from that league. I am going to try to play one more league here. It was only a 3-2 finish, but here is the list that we are currently running with. Take a screenshot here. I'm actually debating on cutting a land right now, though. The problem is when I play this deck in paper, one of these Razor Verge thickets is a Horizon Canopy, which makes me feel a lot more comfortable running... 23 lands <clears throat> as is 23 lands with only one horizon canopy you know what Ixidors do you have a horizon canopy if you do ship me that canopy and I will uh, run the optimal list yeah if you could lend me a canopy that would be great brother I don't know what your MTGO name is but let's get that set up first, and then I will run a double canopy list. I'm going to cut this Razor Verge thicket, add in a second Horizon Canopy, and they're like 30 bucks online right now, and that makes me really comfortable with what this list is. If you just want to add me, I'm no Lux Given. I'm not sure if your name is the same or not, but if it is, I'll add you. Cool. I don't know where the request is going to come from here. It could come from anywhere. Could even come from this game that I already finished. <laughs> sure. What are you doing? Alright. We'll join this league in a second after we trick out this deck list. But yeah, otherwise I do really like the list. Um, I'm not sure... I'm in love with the Anafenza main deck, but I'm going to keep trying it out until I play against somebody that I don't want to board it out against. It does seem reasonable against something like Jund. The, the, the trick is that I always try to trim on my Malira's post board against pretty much anybody. Send me a trade request and mean to send a friend request. Oh, did you not add it to your um, your your tradables yet? That's probably what happened. What are these other cards you got here for us? Am I taking all these? I gotta read what these cards are here real quick. Okay. Whenever you cast a spirit or arcane spell, you may exile this dude if you do... Okay, so you get to blink him. Five mana, four, four, that you get to blink. 
Whenever a spirit or a cane spell gets cast, five mana, create two green three threes, scry one. All right, it's that thing. When it dies, you can exile it. Oh, return any number of spirits. That's a pretty cool one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you create a one one white. What the hell? What are these random ass cards? <laughs> oh, are these just things from chests that you've opened? Damage that would be dealt by Excruciator. Can't be prevented. Neat. Um, add his buddy. You're my buddy now, guy. Gotcha. Yeah, just random chest garbage. I was like, are these, is this a sweet new brew that you're working on that you wanted to show off? Sweet, thank you very much. I'll make sure to get that back to you when I am done here. Let's play new Cocoa Remedies with double canopy in a competitive league. And hopefully we can eke five games out of that and end our stream with that. Cool. Oops. Jungle Fever 85. Best of luck, my friend. What do we have here? Ooh, we got a Horizon Canopy and we got a Razor Verge Thicket. The combo. I'll keep this one. Our opponents kept sevens. We've got uh, three lands to play our Kitchen Finks. Looks like we're against Living End. Potentially some type of Jun deck but probably living end. We'll find out right now. Are we going to see a Desert Ceridon enter the graveyard? No, nope, we're going to see an Architects of Will. Slightly worse, but still a relevant card. Well, hopefully the Scavenging Ooze will be quick enough. I don't know, seems a little bit slow here to run it out there on turn three. Opponent can make three monsters off of it. Um, turn to kill-ish. The problem with the Simeon Spirit Guide route, like... So, if my opponent played a Living End here, all they would be putting into play is an Architects of Will. So, Simeon Spirit Guide isn't really to just speed up the deck so that you can kill that quickly, but it does still speed up the deck and let you put guys onto the battlefield fast. So, like, if I just play Scavenging Ooze here... My opponent can cycle one or two more guys, put three guys into play. Um, doesn't seem like it's that beneficial. I think I'm just going to hide the fact that I have Scavenging Ooze and put a Vizier out onto the battlefield. But yeah, it's not quite... That would be like a turn uh, 10 kill if my opponent went turn 1 Architects, turn 2 Simeon Guide, uh, Violent Outburst. Now, obviously, this could have been a Desert Ceridon instead, which is a three or four turn clock instead of that. Basic Forest, we're going to see a cycled Arc Fiend here. Okay. So my opponent still doesn't have that much going on. At the same time, if they put an Arc Fiend into play, that's still pretty good. Oh, that's annoying as shit. All right. Blood Moon. Shit. I need to draw one of my two basic forests now. That's really unfortunate. Ah, okay. Yeah, and the 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 lame thing is like I could have played around it if I was expecting it. Blood Moon's kind of fallen a little bit out of favor. In Living Endless, it's still obviously a good card. As you see, it just single-handedly wins the game against us here. All right, we'll play Blooming Marsh into play Tapped. Come on, dude. You gave me this Horizon Canopy, and it's just, like, not even doing anything. It can just tap for red mana. What a waste of time. We still do win here in nine more attacks from Vizier of Remedies. Mm. 
that's good to know that Blood Moon is back on the rise. Like I said, I mean, I do like the card. I think Blood Moon is a pretty solid card. I haven't really thought about its implications in the metagame currently. I have, yeah, I've played Blood Moon a lot before. I don't actually love Blood Moon against this deck in general because all we need is a Birds of Paradise and Blood Moon is completely blanked. One of the main reasons to grab Overgrown Tomb here, that's probably all we need to see, but we'll keep it going. We do have a Path to Exile in the deck. Uh, my opponent's going to get to stack the top three cards in my deck also, so you know what? Yeah, that means if we have a Path to Exile, we're just not going to draw it. You get to hit us for 8, 8, and 8 there. That should be enough. I go back and forth on whether Path to Exile is good or not. Do definitely want Reclamation Sage if they are potentially going to keep in Blood Moon. They can't beat Infinite Life. Scavenging Ooze is insane. They can't beat Eidolon of Rhetoric in a quick game. Yeah, I needed to draw Path plus uh, basic planes. <laughs> it was a long shot. I like a lot of these cards here. I like Tidehole of Sculler. Abrupt Decay is reasonable. Path to Exile is reasonable too. One of the tricky things is you play against Living End, and what happens a lot of the time when you're just shutting them down with the Scavenging Ooze is then they just go on the Arc Fiend plan. Now that Arc Fiend and uh, Horror of the Lands are so strong, they're able to do that. Trim a little bit here. I mean, our infinite life combo is still good, like I said, but... Yeah, I'm just not sure. I think I'm going to not play Path to Exiles. So I think I'm not going to play Abrupt Decays, but I might play Paths. What would we need to do to put in two Path to Exiles? Need to cut another Kitchen Finks. Court of Calling's insane. I need to play Court of Calling. Um, I don't think I need to play Walking Ballista. If I just put my whole deck on the battlefield and gain infinite life, that should be good enough. I might not have the black mana to cast Viscera Seer, which is the most important part. But I could potentially turn a witness back a cord or something. Walking Ballista just seems irrelevant. Everything else seems so good. Still need to cut one more card, even. Maybe just one Kitchen Finks? One Kitchen Finks is all we need if we're going to draw our deck. Makes our combo really convoluted. But I think there's something in there. You know what, I probably should have kept in Anafenza as well. But this is a little bit crazy. We're going to give it a shot, though. <laughs> uh, no green mana. Wait, why did I just... Oh, God. All right, well, I'm an absolute shitter. I just clicked keep when I meant to click not keep. Here's a bunch of Leyline of the Voids. Sure. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, double ley line means that we can't get around it. Birds of Paradise. Sweet. I definitely meant a mulligan. <laughs> Sometimes I just get tilted and can't read. Street Wraith, Street Wraith, Carabid. Here we could see a turn two living end, but a turn two living end isn't really all that good even. Um, it'll be a turn two or a two turn clock, which that aspect is sweet, but you still don't really need it. All right, Blooming Marsh, rewarded. Let's go, Devoted Druid. <laughs> yeah, this was a pretty crazy keep from me. Uh, one thing that's pretty interesting about Living End is we can kill our own Devoted Druid in response. 
put it back on the battlefield, which means if we draw Vizier, we're still in a pretty decent spot. Alright, looks like a Living End's coming out here. No, Fulminator Mage. Taking us off white mana. Yep. Well, let's just draw another white source here. How does that sound? One, two, three, four. Let's play Birds of Paradise. Yeah, we can still win this game even. Awkwardly, our Eternal Witness is completely blanked though. So I guess we do need Walking Ballista if our opponent's going to Leyline of the Void us. They also have Leyline of the Voids because to take us off of Viscerous here. Alright, they're just going to pass turns so that our Duskwatch flips. So let's take a look here with these three. Okay. Sounds about par for the course. <laughs> Alright, we lose our... Our Duskwatch Recruiter turns into a 3-3. Oh yeah, I can't get my Devoted Druid from Living End either. Good catch. We just gotta hope Kralin Horde Howler can go all the way and my opponent... My opponent boarded out all of their Violent Outbursts. Nope, here's one. Nope, okay. Just some more cyclers. I mean, we are just immediately dead once they cycle. But hey, it might never happen. Alright, Blackleaf Cliffs is the draw from our opponent here. Architects of Will try to find a Blood Moon or a Violent Outburst or a... Sorcery Speed Cascade spell, which I forget the name of. Hmm... Anything weird I want to do here? No, I don't think so. One, two, three, four. Uh, so I could play Devoted Druid and Eternal Witness to flip my Howler. Could also play my Devoted Druid and nothing else. Um, or the Eternal Witness and nothing else, I mean. Demonic Dread, thank you. I always forget the name of that card. I always want to call it Dread Return. Um, I mean, it doesn't look like my opponent's got much going on. Oh, you know what? I should definitely have... One, two, three, four. Eh! Oh, I should have... I'm an idiot. I should have put Eidolon into play. Could I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. Well... Can I still... Oh, my creatures only cost one. Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. I'm one off. Blarg. Okay. Uh, that was kind of silly, but maybe I can just dump my board and win next turn. It was definitely the wrong play. I definitely 100% should have put an Eidolon onto the battlefield. But, having missed that, let's just go aggro. I was going to flip my crown and watch horde. My opponent could just miss here. They're not doing shit. Bloodstained Mire, and then a Cycler, and then Cascade. I hope they go for the Violent Outburst on my turn. That would be great. Two mana for an Arc Fiend? Sweet. Yeah, they cycled an Arc Fiend. We might just get there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, here it is. Living End entered the Exile Zone! Oh my god! Uh, so, no spells were cast last turn. We need to keep open enough mana to cord for Eidolon. We definitely just got there, though. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we're not going to be using this. How many guys? How many guys can we attack with? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can attack with all three of our guys here. Put our opponent down to one, and then we just cord for Eidolon in response to a Cascade spell. And if my opponent plays a monster, like my opponent could have just cast Arcfiend there. Wait. <laughs> if my opponent just cast Arcfiend and cycled anything, I think we would have lost. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, they're going to cycle. They're going to cycle. Oh my god, they definitely could have won this. Wow! Wow. All right. Well, that's why you don't play living end, dudes. Wow. Oh, my God. I punted that so hard, and my opponent gave it right back to me. Uh, also forgot to bring in Fulminator Mage. Fulminator Mage is pretty good in this matchup. That was ridiculous. <laughs> what else? What else can we do here? My opponent has shown an Inability to just cast their creatures. They've also shown an ability to shut off the graveyard. Maybe we do still just want one Kitchen Finks. Um, do I want an Abrupt Decay to potentially answer the Blood Moon? I just don't think Blood Moon's going to kill us. And we still have the, the Singleton Rex Sage. Alright. I'm going to play with one Kitchen Finks, put the Ballista back in, take out the Path to Exile. Oh, and Offensa could have been good, too. Yeah, you're right. Sand looks solid, though. Our opponent's kept seven. That's pretty unlike unlucky. We have a Leyline of the Void. I don't give a shit. And a Blackleaf Cliffs. Uh, I could have boarded out a, um, you know what, I should have boarded in an Offenza and boarded out an Eternal Witness or a Kitchen Finks. Um, I'll take the Overgrown Tomb because we do a Fulminator in the deck. Street Wraith, end of turn. Looks like my opponent has a much more aggressive draw against us this time. Double Carabid, Street Wraith. Yeah, this is, this is pretty scary. What do we have here? I guess I'll just go play a Vizier. Hope they don't... Hope they don't have the turn three clear. Not sure what else I can do, even. Oh, I also put a Swamp into play. That was pretty silly. Oh well, nothing I can really do here. If they have it, they have it. I just have to hope to hit Eidolon out of Collected Company on turn three. I also should have brought in Selfless Spirit and probably Spell Sky. I think my sideboard plan's completely off right now. I'm a little bit thrown off with the Blood Moon, but I think you do want Spell Sky and Selfless Spirit in this matchup just because your Eidolons. And your scavenging oozes are so good, you want to protect them at any cost. Alright, looks like they don't have it. Or they've got a violent outburst. Which is pretty good for us if that's the plan. So, in response to violent outburst, we're going to company. They're probably companying with this attack on the stack. Uh, it doesn't save your stuff from Living End, but it would save it from something like Anger of the Gods, which is a reasonable sideboard card for them to play, and Jund Charm they have from time to time. I think they're going to cycle some cards on the end step here. So, in response to Violent Outbursts, Cascade, we cast this and put Eidolon into play. 
That's all we got. Vizier, Noble Hierarch. Well, we weren't going to win if we just let it resolve and then Cocoed. Actually, we could have. It's pretty hard to hit, but... Yeah, like, we could have we could have done it the other way around. At the same time, yeah, they also just have lethal on this attack right here. So, that'll do it. I think I played a little bit loose there. But yeah, Spell Sky probably could have come in too, just to protect the Eidolon. Eidolon's quite fantastic. Sin Collector wouldn't have done anything. Coco wouldn't have done anything. Yeah. There was the Eidolon. Just a few more cards deep. Oh well, 1-2 start here. Not the worst. Or not a 1-2 start, just a... Oh, one start, I suppose. But one, two in our first round. I didn't think Living End was that tough of a matchup, but. We are still a creature deck, and they do still run a bunch of Wraths. It has been more difficult than I thought it would be. Looks like my opponent probably did board out the Blood Moons, though, and board in the... They actually might not have. They might have just had Blood Moon in their hand. Alrighty, round two. Let's go, baby. We are on the play. We've got... Potentially a turn three kill. Let's just make it happen. <laughs> oh, let's take this stop off. Alright, looks like we're playing against Valakut here. Sure. <laughs> Alright, well at the very least we'll have infinite life on turn 3, uh, which is good enough against Valakut. Uh, slightly active on Reddit, but I haven't been active on forums for a while here. Lightning Bolt on Devoted Druid, sounds fine. Makes sense. Let's play... I think I'm going to play Viscerous here and Devoted Druid. So if they have another Lightning Bolt, I can at least get some value there. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All we need is a little bit less Lightning Bolts from our opponent, and we should be able to do it here. Hopefully no Anger, too. Seems like they're trying to cast an Explorer, maybe, right now. Not sure. Alright, Tranquil Thicket. Or not Tranquil Thicket, something Thicket. Sheltered Thicket. First time seeing this card. Relic of Progenitus. Alright, there goes the infinite life plan. We still have infinite mana. And we are going to have to exile a Verdant Catacombs. That's fine. We can make them pop it, which might even be enough. The fact is, though, we don't have anything else to do with our infinite mana. So I don't think I want to put infinite mana out onto the battlefield. I think what I would rather do is go get a Duskwatch Recruiter end of turn, and then start trying to activate it there. Um, let's see. I think that's the plan. Just dusk watch end of turn, and then untap and try to do some sheet with them. Okay. 
Yeah, it could have been a tribe elder. It didn't. It just didn't seem like one. Sometimes you just have a feeling. And like, if you have a tribe elder, it's pretty simple how to cast it. But if you have a, a um, explore, you might struggle with how to cast it for just like another second because you're thinking, all right, what if I hit another land drop? What do I want to play? Some weird things like that. So I think it's decently likely my opponent still has another explore in their hand. The old two explorers combo. It'd be real sweet if they just cracked this relic of progenitus here. Pretty unlucky that they even just have it in general. This is a very interactive Valakut player. I'll crack my fetch land in response to the activation of relic just to keep my devoted druid in the bin. And I can get a tapped land here, that's fine. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna get a basic. Here's the explorer. <laughs> what? Alright. Um, they're not gonna crack it right now. Why does my opponent have so much interaction? This is crazy. Yeah, the EE was actually the card that they were trying to figure out how to cast. Well, I think we're potentially going to be able to blow my opponent out here. In some regard. It's going to be tough, though. Okay. Okay. Not blowing up into Devoted Druid is, like, super risky, but I think it's working out for him here. Alright, let's play Kitchen Finks. One, two, three, four, five. We still have enough to Duskwatch Recruiter end step here. Looks like they're just not going to blow up the Engineered Explosive, so... I don't know if this is enough for me to board in Stony Silence against a Valakut deck. <clears throat> Probably. I don't know. Then I don't have enough cards to board in, though, so... I don't know exactly what we're going to do. All right, once again, we will crack our fetch land in response to Relic. Get a planes. Puts us at 19, so we are still at a healthy life total. Opponent with four lands in play. Wonder if they just cut all the ramp for it. Like this is almost just like mono red control at this point. So what's crazy is like if my opponent taps out for Titan, we can combo off in response. Which I'm really hoping is what happens. Yep. But if my opponent has another land, obviously we won't be able to enact that plan. We'll have access to infinite mana, but as long as they're clogging up the graveyard here. We might still be able to win, because they go tap out for Titan here. They already have a Valakut in play, so I guess it's a little bit unlikely. Also, Path to Exile lets them kill one of their creatures. Well, if they escape shift, they don't have to tap out. Um... Sure, we're going to respond to the Titan's trigger, though. This way they can't put two more Valakuts onto the battlefield. This is going to let them kill something right now, which will be the Devoted Druid. The 
fact that this is a wooded foothills could potentially be very interesting. All right. The Valakut's going to target the Sakura tribe elder. I'm telling you, there's some weird things we can potentially do right here. Nah. Just let this happen. I'm going to go down to 18, which is also potentially a little bit risky. And they got two Valakuts. No, this is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. Meant to scry one. That's why I sacked in response. Uh, that's unfortunate. Oh, it shouldn't matter, because I'm going to cord here end of turn regardless. My opponent gets Valakut, Stomping Ground, has two triggers. Going to point one of them at Devoted Druid, going to point the other one at Kitchen Finks. Then I think they are going to Exile in response. Well, Kitchen Finks is going to die first, so let's let Kitchen Finks die. Alright, now Kitchen Finks is going to persist in response. I believe my opponent's going to crack this relic. No, they're going to let it return. I should have realized that. Okay. So do I just go get Spell Sky and protect my Devoted Druid so I have an untapped Devoted Druid? I think so. Wait, I'm not going to. They're going to crack Wooded Foothills. Oh, but they have to put all of their triggers on the stack at the same time. Alright, they might not realize what's happening here. They have to crack their Wooded Foothills in response if they want to kill my guys now. Otherwise, I get to save them all just by paying a few life points. Alright. Oh, I cut Spellskite. <laughs> I cut Spellskite earlier today, so now all I'm doing is giving my opponent the opportunity to kill my Duskwatch Recruiter. All right. I'll get Eternal Witness. I'll Eternal Witness the cord. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely cut Spellskite just, just hours ago. All right. And then they'll get another mountain, and they'll continue to kill our guys here. Grabbing a Cinderglade. It's a pretty interesting list. The fact that they're killing our guys must mean that another Titan is imminent. Will this bait the Relic? I think it will. Okay, so Relic is going to exile everything. That's why they grabbed the land in response. Alright, I'll play a Windswept Heath. It's an uphill battle now. Every mountain kills our creatures. Engineered Explosives untapped. Every land kills our creatures. Summoning Pact goes and gets a Titan, and that's lethal. They'll go get two Valakuts, and we'll just see how many Valakuts they have. But if they go and get two Valakuts, each will trigger the four, four, or no, one, two, three, four, five, six triggers. Yeah. Oh, no, that's more. Oh, because it doesn't say whenever another mountain. Yeah, yeah, so they'll have uh, eight triggers here. I will concede to that for sure. Definitely want Reclamation Sage. Probably don't want Abrupt Decay. Could want Stony Silence. We'll consider it. Definitely want Avon Mind Sensor. Definitely want... Potentially want Spell Sky. I think we do just to protect Avon Mind Sensor. And we definitely want Selfless Spirit. <clears throat> then we have to decide if we want Path to Exile or not. We also want these, I'm pretty sure. All right, we don't need scavenging news. To cut eight cards. Yeah, it's a little bit strange of a deck. Prismatic Omen is cool with Engineered Explosives, though. That's a pretty neat combo. Let's board out a bird. I'm going to board out Anafenza. Board out eight Kitchen Finks. 
I think we can get by without walking ballista. Infinite life is enough to do it. I don't think I want stonies either, but I'm I'm really not sure. So don't know how many path to exiles we want access to. Definitely some number. I think we just want all of them. Because a lot of times we're on the Avon Mind Sensor plan, which means a 6-6 Trampler can still kill us. My opponent's also running four Valakuts, um, which means Spellskite's pretty important for this build. I just don't think we can afford to run Stony Silence, unfortunately. They are a little bit slower, so that's how we're going to be able to punish them here. They also have Lightning Bolt, though, so that's pretty important. Board out one Eternal Witness? Probably just want to board out another Kitchen Finks. Especially because so much of the time the combo will be shut off. What else do I want to board out then? Either another Birds of Paradise. <clears throat> Could board out a Vizier. <clears throat> Alright, let's board out Vizier. We'll be on the play. Turn to Spellskite or Druid. Sounds good. It needs one more mana to just win on turn three. But I could also just go for the turn three win here. My opponent's mold to six. They've mold to five. And they've kept. Temple Guard and go. What is the likelihood that they have a lightning bolt in a... Two card hand. Selfless Spirit kind of lets us split the difference. And we also don't have our third land yet. This is kind of reasonable. So this takes them off of something like Anger of the Gods. Or Engineered Explosives. As a means to interact with us. But unfortunately they also had the Lightning Bolt. So we are punished for not running out Spellskite first. I thought we could be a little bit more proactive by just playing that guy. Uh, still don't have the other land. I don't think they have double lightning bolt. I'm real, real punished if they do, but I don't think they do. Off a of mold of five to have double lightning bolt, nothing else. Like, even if they do, we've got to be in a decent position here. This is just going to be the anger. Okay, so they did have the anger, so... It was kind of reasonable. Oh, I should have killed it. That was dumb. Could have put my dude into the graveyard. Alright, but now we will have Spellskite protecting an Avon Mind Sensor. And maybe through all of it, that is all we really needed. Three mana, all red. What could this be? Some type of artifact destruction? No. Mizium Mortars. Search for Tomorrow, hard cast. Okay. That's a weird one. Wasn't expecting it. And Land, Forest, Explore. Sakura Tribe Elder. Damn. All right, they are already ready for prime time. I'm going to play Windswept Heath, crack it in response to Sakura Tribe Elder. They are probably still going to hit, but if we can keep them off of prime time mana for one more turn here, that seems pretty reasonable. Let's go, I believe, Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, Overgrown Tomb over Godless Shrine. Pay two life. Avon Mind Sensor. This is kind of a get em, but they could still hit, and they can still cast their prime time. Alright, they still hit. Their prime time is able to be cast now. Scape shift we've taken them off of. Alright, that is a cycle land. That's a pretty sweet one. Considering the cycle lands are also mountain forests, it's pretty insane. And Farseek, Farseek is going to... Miss. Actually, don't even love casting Farseek there because it's a much better play after a Living End. Uh, we can Tide Hollow Sculler and take their prime time now. That seems insane. Let's do that. Yeah, give me that prime time. And I'll take a Duskwatch Recruiter as well, or play a Duskwatch Recruiter. Kind of opens us up into Anger of the Gods, but we know our opponent is just on top deck mode. So. 
Let's just hope they don't have it. And continue to beat face. Alright, they played a land. Pass the turn. Our Duskwatch Recruiter is going to flip. Let's view our sideboard. Because we might just want to cast a cord this turn. I think we do. I don't even know what for. Considering our battlefield so good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like, what if we just cord for like... There's two things we can do. We can either cord for Eternal Witness to get back the Selfless Spirit. That, that's our entire turn. Or we can also just... Um, yeah, let's cord for Eternal Witness and put the Selfless Spirit back on the board. That seems really strong. Green, green, green. One, two, three. Yeah, so we cord for Eternal Witness. Get back the Spirit. Spirit only costs one to cast. And now we just have this ultimate hate bears battlefield out there. And we get to smack for three. So my opponent's dead in like two turns here. Our Duskwatch Recruiter is going to flip back, should we really want that. But mostly what's important here is that we're protecting Avon Mind Sensor, something fierce. Still definitely could have lost that game, but wasn't likely. Because we were also presenting a pretty strong clock against my opponent there. That game plan seemed pretty good. That seems like exactly what I want to do. So any other changes we can make? Not really. Abrupt Decay and Stony Silence are the only cards sitting out that kind of want to get in. Orzhov Pontiff is fine sitting on the sidelines, and a Vizier and an Anafenza are fine watching from the wings. We also still were able to fit in three Path to Exiles. This, this sideboard plan seems pretty strong. All right, opponent is on the play. They have kept their hand. We have a hand of no hate, but a Duskwatch Recruiter to dig, to dig. Our opponent's deck just feels so slow to me. We're going turn two, Devoted Druid. I mean, the, the deck is essentially two different decks. If you've never played against Scape Shift before, it's essentially two different decks. There's a Scape Shift where they draw Search for Tomorrow and cast it turn one. And there's a scape shift where they don't draw search for tomorrow and cast it on turn one. Because the deck is just so vastly different in those two scenarios. We also kind of have a similar thing going on in that our mana dudes uh, allow for more explosive turn one plays. That's perfect. Though the fact that my opponent has a Valakut means that they are going to... Well, we've got a turn three kill. Uh, let's just try to turn three, kill him. My opponent doesn't have a lightning bolt or an engineered explosives. We kind of just win. I will mention that I did take out walking ballista. So our combo here is simply going to be to dump our deck out onto the battlefield. It is not the most clean combo in the world. Alright, so my opponent can't engineer explosives this turn. They go for my Windswept Teeth. Sure, that's what I wanted to give you anyways, but that lets them F6. Yeah, we don't have any Walking Ballista or any Anafenza. We have 14 minutes left, so <clears throat> I think we can make this happen, though. Don't want to make my life total too low, and I kind of want white mana in play. Might just grab basic planes here, actually. Alright, sounds good. Alright, so if my opponent angers, sure. They're just trying to, like, eat time off my clock or something at this point. I'm not really sure. Right, hopefully they tap out for a non-search for tomorrow card. I don't know exactly how they would do that. This looks like anger. All right, I'll put it in my graveyard. All 
Can Eternal Witness it back? That seems pointless. Let's just play Devoted Druid and Birds of Paradise. They need another Anger. Yeah, my opponent's just on, like, Interactive Shift. Which is an interesting build of the deck for sure. <clears throat> they definitely don't have a Lightning Bolt, or they would have cast that. Looks like another Anger, a Sweltering Suns. Uh, Sweltering Suns, we can just let our creatures die to. That's fine. And then they're going to crack Windswept Heath and grab a Cinderglade. No, Stomping Grounds taking two damage to keep a mana open. That sounds fine. I'll exile Windswept Heath and... <laughs> another Devoted Druid. Wow. Wow. That is so funny to just hit all the Devoted Druids here. Um... Well, they clearly don't have a Lightning Bolt. They might just have more of these, but... My question is just if I want to run Vizier out there. I think I do. Yeah, I don't really want my Duskwatch Recruiter to flip, and I kind of want to cast some cards. My opponent's at 13, so like at some point, just putting cards on the battlefield to try to clock them is going to be good. No Lightning Bolt here. Top decking and wrecking, for sure. So this is the fifth mana for my opponent. And a third AoE spell. Another Sweltering Suns, I have to imagine. No, four mana for Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Chandra is going to kill Devoted Druid and then die to Vizier? Oh, I don't think this is going to... Oh, my opponent's still got Relic up. Oh, the Relic is actually super clutch here. So my opponent can kill Vizier... And then I can Eternal Witness to try to get Vizier back. Okay. Well, my opponent's going to go for that. That means Chandra's dead at least. But my opponent does have access to... Um, whatchamacallit next turn. Let's start off by killing Chandra. My opponent's got access to Primeval Titan next turn. Let's kill Chandra. So I've got two potential plays here that I can make. I can go Duskwatch, Activate... Or I can play Eternal Witness, bait out the Relic. And if they don't pop the Relic, then I get back Devoted Druid, which also seems fantastic. Alright, let's go for that. So we are going to see Relic get popped here. That's fine. Now I just get to play Duskwatch Recruiter. I only have one more Devoted Druid in the entire deck. But assuming my opponent doesn't have the land for Primeval Titan, I mean, they probably have it, right? I think they're pretty likely to have it, and I think we probably lose this game. But if not, we get to untap and then try to dig and find some sweet hate bears. Another anger? You are kidding me. No, okay. They're bluffing. They're bluffing us here. It's crazy that they fetched a third stomping grounds. I can't imagine what that's for. All right, search for tomorrow. Whoo! Uh, this is going to mean that my opponent can blow up my Duskwatch Recruiter here. Well, what just happened? One, two, three. Oh, they didn't have enough for it yet. Okay. Okay, okay. Right, 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 right. Okay. Get to hit my opponent for a decent amount of damage here. And Eternal Witness is also pretty good. On the playback. Um, yeah, we're looking for... Uh, and the Mind Sensor is so clutch. But we just can't cast it. That's really unlucky. Now they know about Avon Mind Sensor. Um, there's a chance the right play was actually just take Vizier there. We were really looking for Sin Collector. 
My opponent plays a land. They're going to be able to kill both of our dudes here. Oh, shit! Oh, my God! How insane is this? Duskwatch Recruiter transforms, and now I can cast Avon Mind Sensor. Oh, my God! Primeval Titan? Oh, my God! How insane is this? In response to the Primeval Titan trigger, I get to flash in a cheap Avon Mind Sensor. My opponent, no way they have Lightning Bolt here. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Kralin, Kralin Horde Howler. My opponent still is man manages to grab a Valakut and a Mountain here. All right, well. It was short-lived. It was short-lived, but still pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, let's find a path to exile here off the top. Then lose our Eternal Witness and then play another Path to Exile. I mean, my opponent definitely just has Lethal. Oh, that was so close. That was so close. Yeah, we needed my opponent to, to whiff off of that. All right, that, that leaves us 1-2. Or not 1-2. 0-2. Oh, definitely not the best start here. But I'm still having fun. Yeah, that was a sweet interaction. I feel like I won because I got to see an interaction with the deck that I have not yet seen. Uh, yeah, that that's never come up for me before, for sure. And I almost didn't even notice it. I'm not sure I would have noticed that in... No, I guess I would have noticed it in paper. Yeah, because I would have transformed my dude. This hand seems solid. Turn two, Kitchen Finks. We are on the draw. But turn two, Kitchen Finks, turn three, Collected Company, turn four, Court of Calling. Sounds solid. All right. Our opponents kept their seven card hand. We're going to keep ours as well. I don't know what this is. I guess we're playing against... I have no idea. What deck goes Darksteel Citadel Chrome Sphere? I'm trying to think. I don't think it's something particularly normal. I think we're looking at a silly deck here. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at the um It's a silly deck. We're gonna board in Stony Silence is the long and the short of it. I think we're looking at that deck. Oh, I guess it is just. So my thought originally was that it wouldn't be the the Lantern deck, because I didn't think Lantern ran Darksteel Citadel. Tron also definitely would not run Darksteel Citadel. Um, <clears throat> oh no, I guess it is just an Eggs deck. And right, you run Darksteel Citadel so that you can kill your own Citadel and uh, combo off. Okay, so we're looking at an Eggs deck here. Just want Stony Silence and Scavenging Ooze. Darksteel Citadel threw me off for a second, but... <clears throat> it's eggs. I was also thinking that it could be... What? What is Sanctum of Ugin doing in here? Weird. Seems win more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, jeez. All right, they're going for it here. That's also why you play Darksteel Citadel, because it's an artifact for your ironwork, so that makes sense. Draw a card off 
Sphere and oh, they drew a card off Sphere by tapping it. Sphere is not as good as Star in the deck. Okay, Hangerback Walker. I feel like you get more value out of Hangerback Walker if you cast it for something more expensive, but maybe they just didn't need it. All right, they get to search up. This is crazy. Even Mind Sensor, I guess, can come in. <clears throat> so they can cast a... Oh, right. Okay, so this is like the combo card. Whenever an art another artifact dies, you get to return something that costs less. So they always get to return Hanger Back Walker. But they can also return Stars and Spheres. And Tarians. Right, Abrupt Decay comes in too. Stony Silence is the main one though. Yeah, so, yeah, Hangerback Walker then lets them pay two mana to generate four mana. They can't get anything back off Hangerback, or can they? No, they can't get back Darksteel Citadel. So Hangerback is where they stop, but they've got five mana. And what are we going to see for five? They could also sacrifice the Ironworks to keep going here. No, they drew a star. <laughs> so so this is, it's the new eggs deck. They can sack any artifact to add two colorless mana to their mana pool. Whenever they sacrifice an artifact, they get back an artifact that costs less mana than the artifact that, that, that just died. And it does trigger off the Trawler too. So they just play a bunch of artifacts that draw cards when they die, like Icar Wellspring, Hangerback Walker. I am pretty sure my opponent's playing Hangerback Walker wrong, right? Oh no, never mind. No, Hangerback Walker is a break even, yeah. Hangerback Walker, you tap two mana for it, and it gives you four mana. That's right. Alright, now they have a second Scrap Trawler, so we're definitely dead here. And I guess the reason that they play Sanctum of Ugin is now they can play a big Hangerback Walker. Every time they sacrifice something, now they get two things back. Uh, they're not storming. They're going to create a bunch of mana and then cast a Hangerback Walker for X equals four. They'll break even on mana. They're, they're like netting mana this whole time, and they're netting cards. So I'm just kind of letting them play this out so that we can kind of see what's going on. Um, they definitely... They can't fizzle at this point in the combo because they're, every card that they draw draws them like seven cards. So... They'll have a bunch of mana. They're going to turn those cards into mana over time. A lot of them don't even make mana initially, but they do slowly, and some are there just to make cards. Once they cast a Hangerback Walker for X equals 8, they'll be able to sacrifice Sanctum of Ugin and go and get an Emrakul, and at that point it's just about them generating enough mana that they can combo off and kill us. Uh, Emrakul will give them another turn, and they'll attack us with Emrakul plus two Scrap Trawlers and some Thopters, and that'll be it. Yeah, we can let it see happen. So there is Emrakul, and at this point, so there's the Emrakul. My opponent can sacrifice this Hangerback Walker. That doesn't get him anything back. And then they can sacrifice each of these for 12 more mana. And that'll do it. Um, we're not actually dead to this, but there's no way we can beat it. My opponent will take an extra turn. They can, they're can they like free to just do stuff on their extra turn. They still have five cards in hand. So they'll attack me. My Kitchen Finks will persist. The other thing is like this Emrakul is not going away. So I could block here. I'm going to go up to 24 and my opponent's only attacking for 21. So I lose my board. Yeah. 
trade with one of the scrap trawlers, at which point my opponent's going to get uh, an acre wellspring and a mine stone back into their hand because both of their scrap trawlers will trigger and they can combo out and do it again. I don't know if they have another Emrakul in their deck or if they have the path or if they have to pass the turn, but either way they're going to be able to kill me on the next turn here. So definitely want Stony Silence. Probably just want all spot removal spells that we can come up with here. Don't think Spell Skite does anything. Fulminator Mage seems medio mediocre. Tide Hollow Scholar seems good. Reclamation seems good. And Scavenging is as good. Oh, you know what? I had a lot of rhetoric. Pretty decent, too. Even Mind Sensor might be okay. Now nah, we're good. I don't know if I want Walking Ballista. It'll be fine, actually. I don't think I need Viscerous here. They can beat Infinite damage. If they have a second Emrakul in their deck... Uh, no, the deck is pretty cheap. Uh, the most expensive card in it has got to be Emrakul, but the rest of it is all uncommons, which I'm sure some of those uncommons have gone up in value a little bit, but yeah, the deck's definitely not that expensive. We can Aven Mind Sensor to keep them off of Fabricate, too. Seems somewhat important to their deck. I do kind of need Walking Ballista, though. Yeah, deck's definitely not expensive, but I'm not sure where you could find a list. Keep in one cord. I don't know how much one cord really helps us, but keep it in regardless. I guess I'll board out a Vizier. Makes us pretty unlikely to combo. But I definitely want my mana dudes. Yeah, this hand would be shit without a mana dude. Walking Ballista's pretty bad. This hand is pretty much just relying on Abrupt Decay. Plus Eternal Witness. I'm going to mulligan. Just want a little bit more mana. All right. This hand seems solid, though. Turn two, Devoted Druid. Turn three, Collected Company. And we're on the play. Our opponent's kept seven. We're going to keep, and we are definitely going to keep Stony Silence. Let's play Windswept Teeth and pass the turn, making sure we don't crack Windswept Teeth here. And what kind of artifact do you have for us? Ancient Stirrings. Sounds good. My opponent undoubtedly put some artifact or enchantment kill spells in their deck. Sanctum of Ugin, that's not a problem. I mm, think we can just run out the Druid here. Made the mana a little bit awkward. Probably should have just led with a basic land here, but... I might need double white next turn. That's going to be awkward. Uh, you can link it. I think I have links banned, but if you link it... I should be able to see it. Actually, just post it. I'm curious to see what happens when you post a link right now. Alright, yeah. Punished for not leading on a second white mana. Yeah, I was curious. So links will still pop up. So there's a link for it for anybody watching the video. Unfortunately, I can't click that link. Uh, you could PM it to me as well, and I could put it on screen. That works. Uh, do I want to just go for the turn 2 kill? I think not. I think I just want to put a Stony Silence into play. A turn 2 kill and a turn 3 kill isn't much different. It is funny that it still shows up on the screen. Gavin a Township. Bunch of creatures that can't be activated. Alright, let's go for it here.
What's awkward is like we're kind of tapped out right now, but we're going to untap out if we go to kill them. I don't think that's really that awkward though. Alright, let's go for a Coco. Take a Scavenging Ooze and a Noble Hierarch. Those cards sound great. Passing up a Stony Silence. Again, only white, one white mana, definitely punishing. We have Infinite Graveyard Exile now as well. Uh, I'll play Gavany. Oh, Devoted Druid's my only creature that can attack? Okay. Stony Silence should be able to just make it happen here, but... Alright. That's all my opponent needed to see. We showed them a few more cards, even. Don't want Fulminator Mage. Orzhov Pontiff is actually kind of cool against all the token creation that they make. Like, if my opponent is just trying to slow thus down. <laughs> hey, you doing? Catacomb Slugger. I know who you are. Orzhov Pontiff seems decent against the... Um, what's the name of that card? Not Walking Ballista. The other XX creature. We are 1-0 currently against Kark Clan Eggs. Or no, we're 1-1. They won game one. So we're in game three against Kark Clan Eggs. Debating right now if I want to put Orzhov Pontiff in the deck. I don't really think I do. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah, 0-2 overall, 1-1 one, one in this match. <laughs> yeah, not super hot. But I'm having fun, and that's what's important. And we have a turn 3 kill, and that's what's important. Both of those things pretty important, I'd say. I'm not sure which is more important, the fun or the turn 3 kill, but... The turn three kill will potentially let us have more fun, so there is some added value in that as well. Let's go Temple Garden. Not sure. If I draw a turn two Stony Silence, I might just play it. Eh, probably won't. Sanctum, Sanctum. Sanctum seems like a really weird land in this deck. Like, when you... Trigger Sanctum, you're already kind of winning. But maybe it helps generate mana or some other weird thing that I'm missing. Alright, let's just... Let's just run out this Druid. Seems good enough to me. <laughs> Alright, Icker Wellspring... Deck just not fast enough this game to... Huh, you Sanctum, you get the... You get Mirror Enforcer. That's really weird. Alright, my opponent does have a mana up, so they could respond to our Vizier of Remedies here. Looks like we're gonna be okay, though. <laughs> yeah, this is an Affinity. <laughs> Um, that would be really interesting. Mirror Enforcer plus Sanctum of Ugin in Affinity. Oh, I like it. I like that a lot. Okay, my opponent will probably just concede to Dusquatch Recruiter here, so let's show it to him. GG's. Alright, well played, friend. And we made him show us the combo, but he did not make us show us. Com pronouns confuse me. 2017 has been a weird year for me, and 2016, because pronouns already confused me sometimes. And uh, pronouns just got a whole lot more confusing recently, but... 
maybe that's a horrible topic to bring up. So the biggest debate between Ballista or Ronis, I actually think the biggest thing that Ronis has going for it is that Ronis allows you to combo through a stony silence against Tron. That's true. You did come back into chat and then we started winning again. Very, very interesting, Ixidors. The reason that I like... So, so Ronus is also good because it means you don't have to run the Duskwatch recruiters if you don't want to. If you wanted to, you could just run... Um, you could just run the combo and then one or two Ronus because you could Coco for them and you could collect a company for them. Sand seems fine. Hopefully we're playing against something like Burn and they don't have too many Searing Bloods. And we will get to just gain infinite life against them. So if you are willing to play a 1-1 split on Ronus and Ballista, I feel like the Ronus should just be another Duskwatch recruiter. Because Duskwatch is just better. Like even if you're willing to play two Ronus, just play a Ronus and a Duskwatch. Because Duskwatch is just infinitely better than Ronus in most games of Modern. So that's kind of my philosophy there. Opponent tutors up Basic Swamp. Um, we'll see how good Infinite Life is against them. I'd much rather deal infinite damage with this Devoted Druid draw. So this seems good to me too. Yeah, four, four of everything. Four Ronus, four Ballista, four Duskwatch Recruiter. Oh, you're saying you're playing four Vizier, four Devoted Druid, four Duskwatch, and then one Ronus and one Ballista. That's interesting. Um, in that case, I would cut the Ronus for an Eternal Witness. That would be my recommendation. Kitchen Finks is insane. Let's play Kitchen Finks. Or just like play another Kitchen Finks or something. Um, I didn't think about it too much, birds compared to Noble. There's, there's different arguments for both. I honestly just didn't think about it too much. Alright, so we're going to see a block and then... A, I guess, dismember after declaration of blocks here. See, Fatal Push Bird. Oh, shit. Fatal Push Bird to make it bigger. I did not see that one coming. But we got our Bird Fatal Pushed. Like, I have to kind of be okay with that, right? If that play made my opponent willing to Fatal Push my Birds of Paradise when... I'm already kind of killing it. I think I'm okay with that. Like, I was thinking they can't Fatal Push the Kitchen Finks, so I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm not going to not block. I figured we were just going to see, like, a Go for the Throat or a Doom Blade or a Victim of Night or a Dismember on the Kitchen Finks. Or Abrupt Decay. I guess Abrupt Decay is the most reasonable card. Just kind of forgot about Abrupt Decay there for a second. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to play different cards in the list. Opponents just resolving their Grim Flare trigger. Decided to keep every card on top? What happened? Oh no, they card the cards just went into the graveyard in a random order. So my opponent binned... Looks like they binned Thoughtseize, Traverse, and left themselves with... Um, left themselves one card. Yeah, this list is sweet. I do like black, uh, green now. Black green just got a bunch of boons to its mana base recently, which I think is really sweet. I'm gonna play Devoted Druid. I'm a little bit scared here, and I think we actually gain the most on this board if we just get a Devoted Druid online. Alright, that is going to turn on Fatal Pushes, but I'm not sure what else 
a fourth land is going to give my opponent here. Probably not a Liliana. Not sure. I'm going to say no blocks go to 11 here. My opponent also kept a card on top, so it's pretty likely that they're going to play something good. I would have kept a removal spell on top if I were them. They also binned a traverse. So that's interesting. All right. I don't know why the graveyard fills up in random orders now, but it looks like Bloodstained Mire, Death Shadow, and something else went to the graveyard, and then... All right, my opponent just, just milled themselves. They did keep one card on top. They're going to play a Tarmogoyf. So what's going to happen here, another Tarmogoyf. What's going to happen here is I'm going to win the game. My opponent went all in on the Tarmogoyfy plan. And we're just going to play a Vizier. And hit him up with the GG. My opponent will probably concede to Ballista, or not Ballista, but the Duskwatch Recruiter. They might not concede until they see the Ballista, which is a little bit, as far as Magic Online is concerned, a little bit long of a combo. Let's go for X equals 3. So I could see playing Ronus, or sorry, X equals 2. I could see playing Ronus just so that you don't have to do all this shit every time. All right. They're going to concede to that. Jund can't even just beat that. So yeah, the biggest things that I think Rock got for it, obviously Fatal Push, but also just the fact that they just got Blooming Marsh and Hissing Quagmire. All three of those cards I think makes Black, Green good again. That said, playing Grim Flare, um, I like the list with Dark Confidants better, personally. I understand Dark Confidant... Death Shadow is kind of a combo, kind of a nombo. But I don't like playing Grim Flare with no Lingering Souls. Like, my opponent's only interaction with Grim Flare right now is the uh, Traverse the Oven Worlds. So I don't love that. Alright, what else are we going to do here? Path to Exile and Abrupt Decay come in. We we'll board out some combo cards, but we don't even have that many combo cards to begin with. I think I'm just going to board out combo cards, though. You don't really need infinite life against them. Scavenging Ooze is insane. Board out some Devoted Droids as well. What else would I even want? I don't want Fulminator Mage considering they're just a two-color deck. I could keep it an Anafenza over a Vizier considering it could be a little bit more grindy. And I don't think I'm going to do much else other than that. I don't like Selfless Spirit and Fatal Push against non-Lightning Bolt decks. Reclamation Sage could be good against some sideboard cards. Really just my ga main game plan against Tarmogoyf decks is Path to Exile, Eternal Witness, plus Scavenging Ooze. That's really all you have to do to beat them. Mana Dudes are good in helping us figure out that plan. Rest seems solid. Um, yeah, I shave cords from time to time. This isn't really one of the matchups that I do, just because I don't have that much that I want to bring in. Like, Vizier isn't great, but you could you could shave some cords. You never shave Cocos, though. That card's just, just too good. Thing is, we're not really even making our cords that much worse. We're just not playing a two-drop as often. This hand seems great. We've got the Double Horizon Canopy Punish. Thank you, Ixador's Dreams, for lending us a Horizon Canopy once again. I don't think I've used Horizon Canopy in any of these games now that you've lent me them, but... Alright, going down to 17 and Thought Season Us. Probably just taking a Devoted Druid. We've got a turn 3 company regardless of what they do. They might Fatal Push our Bird, in which case they'll just take one of our companies. Leave us with the other one. Though, no, the, even that doesn't seem great. I don't know, we're probably just going to kill my opponent turn 3, regardless of what they do. <laughs> right. You'd, you'd feel better giving me this Horizon Canopy if it actually got us some goddamn value, but... Unfortunately, that's not what we're looking at here. 
I do actually think that the... All right, they do just take one of the Cocos. Smart plan. Smart plan. We'll pump up our own Death Shadows here. I do think that the green-white Cycle Land is also potentially... I think the Cycle Lands are fantastic. I think that it's going to be a while before everybody realizes just exactly how good those cards are, and we're going to just see them pop up in a lot more lists. Yeah, it really has been a bad brush land. All right, my opponent's got two three threes. Fortunately, we can't ballista any of those boys. Just play a Devoted Druid and hope to win the game next turn. Seems reasonable. Opponent's got quite the start. Yes, the bicycle lands. Coming into play tapped is a little awkward, but you also can fetch for them. We saw a um, Valakut player play them earlier, which it seems insane in Valakut. Coming into play tapped is a big cost. It's a really big cost in uh, mana dork lists. Godless Shrine, Death Shadow. All right, my opponent is saying... Do you have it? That is what my opponent is saying here. Walking Ballista isn't going to get us anywhere. We can chump block two of my opponent's creatures, but I think my opponent really just wants to know, do you have it? Let's see, what if they play one more Shockland? Maybe I do need to play this Plains here. Now, we want to be able to chump block with Bird, chump block with Devoted Druid, and chump block with, like, the creatures that we get off company. All right. Uh, but maybe... This is tricky. I guess we're going to need both of these anyways. Okay. Let's go for it. My opponent has to... They have to kill our guy in response... And they didn't. So we win. There you go. That's how you beat the green-black Death Shadow. It is probably green-black with like a single Godless Shrine. So my opponent can try to blow up my Devoted Druid here. Regardless of what they do, we're going to be able to generate infinite mana here. So if they have a kill spell in their hand, this is not going to work out for them. That's why you always just kill Devoted Druid. At the very least, you always kill Devoted Druid in response to Vizier of Remedies. And I know that seems horrible, because, like, what if they just killed Devoted Druid in response to Coco here, and then I uh, just played a Viscerous here, right? Yeah, Sudden Shock out of the, the green-black list. Abrupt Decay. Sudden Abrupt Decay. That's what they need. Yeah, so this will, this will put us 2-2 uh, two, two in the league. I believe. Yeah, this will put us 2-2. Two, two. We beat the, the one deck and the other deck. Alrighty. Well, we might have to wait 10 minutes here before we are allowed to play the last game. That seems to be like, like the second to last game on the stream. We seem to have a player who uh, has some internet problems. Well, you know what? I have a family, too, and this guy's uh, got some random-ass internet problems right before I'm trying to have dinner with my family. I'd never run a bicycle land in my infect list. No, yeah, definitely not an infect. I wouldn't run an infect list to begin with, but I definitely wouldn't run a bicycle land in an infect list, especially because there's also no Simic bicycle land. But, yeah, that's, that's definitely a list. I think decks that have a turn... Like, they really, really want to curve off. Don't want it. But I think if there was a green-black one, that green-black would play it. Um, like, that's basically what I'm saying. Are we going to see it in Jund in the future? All right. So he's going to abrupt a chaos in response. I'm going to make infinite mana in response. A black green infect. Black green infect actually seems reasonable. Yeah, I like it. the The problem is, problem is just like the infect wants to be a fast deck, but you're definitely more of a mid rangey deck if that's the case. I mean, soul tie infect used to be a thing, 
And I think it used to run some discard spells, but yeah. Now you would play Infect and you would just lean all on the discard spells. You'd go like, turn one, discard, turn two, discard, uh, Glistener Elf. You'd probably want to play the full eight discard spells. Right, the Hand Hate replaces Gitaxian Probe. I don't even think you're running Phyrexian Crusader, but the biggest thing is you're running eight one-mana discard spells to protect your infectors. But you're running um, you're running Ink Moth, Plague Stinger, and Glistener Elf for sure. And then maybe you run like you run like two of the other guy. Oh, my opponent's only at eight. We didn't have to make nearly this much mana. I just looked up. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to make nearly this much mana. My fault. Well, we'll go for the full 40 anyways. All right. Let's let these things resolve. There's still a Kitchen Finks gain two ability on the stack. All righty. Like, even if we, and if we didn't have Walking Ballista, if we had Duskwatch Recruiter, I would have just kept going until I had, like, 200 mana in my pool or something. All right, just have to hope they don't have a Pact of Negation here. But I think we'd still be okay if they had Pact of Negation, because they don't, they, that means they wouldn't have an Angel's Grace. Man, look how big my opponent's board is, and we still beat them. My opponent has three 12-12s out on the battlefield. And we still won. That's pretty crazy. Though, if you look at it, my Walking Ballista is a 13-13. Their Death Shadow is only a 1-1. One, one. So, I guess it makes sense that we won here, right? Alrighty, 2-2. Two, two. Let's finish off this league. Something fierce. This is such a weird YouTube video. There's like three minutes of silence in it. Yeah, I could have killed the Death Shadows for, for maximum BM. I'm not actually sure if my opponent was... Yeah. <laughs> Just happened to go into silent mode for the combo. It seems like that always happens regardless of what I do, even though that's the point of me playing music. Uh... This is a little bit of a slow hand, but if we get to play against something like Jund or Grixis, then it's pretty solid here. Could play a turn one Viscerous here. I don't think I care too much about comboing out. I guess it's decent because we've got Court of Calling in our hand. Alright, sure. Turn one Viscerous here. I like rarely ever do this, but... Seems interesting. If nothing else. Not sure if you guys have noticed Ixidors, if you notice what basic lands I'm playing with. Playing with the Steve Prescott Lorwyn Panoramas. Pretty sweet. Okay. Um, well, it is a blue grindy deck, so I guess I fished my wish here. Get to smack for one, so that's kind of cool. I kind of want to curve out, but I kind of don't want to play either of my two drops. Which is pretty awkward. Eh. I'm going to fetch a Temple Garden here just so my mana is a little bit better for the Scavenging Ooze. And also because they're potentially playing Path to Exile. I'll play Duskwatch. Or scavenging news. I think Duskwatch might actually even be better this game. Yeah, sounds good, man. Alright, so we are playing against the blue-white as foretold deck. Solid. Let's attack another Snapcaster. Just want to get them as low as we possibly can. I'm gonna play Kitchen Finks here. 
Oh, Blessed Alliance. We have to sacrifice a Viscerous here? Sure, I'm super glad I played that Viscerous here now. All Viscerous here wants to do is get sacrificed. Let's go ahead and play a Kitchen Finks here. I think I can afford to play it off bit. Hey, you know what? No, they're not going to clock me. Let's just go get another Temple Garden. My life total's low now, but we're back up to 15. We'll be tied with them at 17 once they restore balance us here. All right, no restore balance this turn. Hmm. This is tricky. Yeah, Infect still isn't bad, and a lot of players kind of, like, forget how to play around it now. And the deck does have some solid cards in it, like Blossoming Defense is a pretty sweet card. It's new in the deck now. Um, I've never been a huge fan of it. Gitaxian Probe makes it a little bit weaker, but the deck is probably still fine. So they could have Supreme Verdict, or they could have As Foretold Restore Balance. Both of those things are pretty awkward. Yeah. When Infect's bad, people just forget, especially like newer players. I've definitely made some mistakes against Infect recently. I think I'm just going to play Noble Hierarch as a hedge here. We are racing this Ancestral as well, so that is something to consider. Next turn my opponent is going to have an Ancestral, but here is a Supreme Verdict. So. The hedge was reasonable. We go up to 15, we get back a Kitchen Finks. And hopefully, all right, no company for us, but no company for old men. Is that the movie? What's that movie called? No country. No country for old men. Not no company for old men. All right. <laughs> all right, now we've got our opponent on a two-turn clock, but my opponent's going to draw back up to seven cards in hand here, and then eight after their draw set. Yeah, he just didn't didn't think about blocking. That's a little silly. Four mana for a Jace Architect of Thought here. Jace is probably going to tick up. Yeah, all right. So that's going to blank some of our Kitchen Finks action here. Now I'm not sure where I should be sending my beats. I think I should send my beats at Jace because that's going to keep them off of it here. I can't Viscerous here. I also don't have enough green mana to Court of Calling. That's funny. Alright, I'm just going to play Anafenza. And we're going to swing out at Jace. Put it probably as a path to exile in their hand with that open mana. Kind of representing it, but. Alright. No path to exile. Interesting. Are they going end step path and offensa? No. Alright, they're gonna take up Jace again. And not have enough mana to colonnade either. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Another forest is great. That means we've got a lot of options here. So I'm going to go ahead and say Kitchen Finks face everything else. Jace. It's a little bit tricky because if my opponent has a kill spell, they're going to want to point it at Anafenza. This is fine. 
I could pump my team before blocks here. We'll see what happens. Alright, they're gonna go path on this Kitchen Finks. Um... Yeah, I guess I should have just swung out everything, because yeah, path does definitely go to Kitchen Finks. What if they have Snapcaster path? I guess I want to Coco right now. Right, let's Coco now. They've got a negate for Coco. This is game one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Main deck negate arena. Let's play a forest. I'm going to put Jace down to two. And them down to nine. Alright, I guess I'll just try swinging all out at Jace here. I do get to play Duskwatch pre-combat to pump my Kitchen Finks. Could also play Devoted Druid to do the same thing. Yeah, that's better. Let's hang on to this Duskwatch Recruiter for as long as we possibly can. Yeah, Jace just good in general. Uh, we're going to bolster, reset our Kitchen Finks. <clears throat> I guess our opponent's attempting to block our Jace here. What if we play Duskwatch so that Kitchen Finks is lethal against Jace? Alright, I'm into it. Could have also done that in combat, but... Just play the Supreme Verdict completely. See Cryptic Command bouncing something else. Yep. Alright, this does at least mean we get to attack Jace here for one. I don't love that. We're still keeping Jace from minusing and surviving. Huh. Yeah, I'm not even sure I know completely what Unraveler of Secrets does. Alright, so my opponent's going to cash in their Jace. Uh, this is so weird that you can't just drag them. I think we want to pile like this. The game is pretty likely to last three more turns, though. Problem is, none of these piles are great. A land is still reasonable for my opponent here. Uh, it is almost not worth playing Basic Swamp. I have debated cutting it. I decided to cut an Overgrown Tomb instead of cutting Basic Swamp. But, yeah, Basic Swamp is... Pretty borderline. Uh, if you want to show me how to set that up, I guess I'll just separate Ancestral. Where is... How do I get to see what they took? All right, well, they took the Mystic Gate, quite clearly. Elspeth, that seems like a problem card. But my opponent is tapped out. There's a few things we can draw that just win us the game. Eternal Witness, Collected Company, Vizier of Remedies. Let's see. So we'll play Vizier, Bolster Vizier. And I'm going to do this for a little bit. So we just need to make enough mana here so that even if our opponent does some 
random stuff in response. How do I think Eldrazi and Taxes is in this meta? That's a really interesting question. Um, there's Eldrazi and Taxes. There's also another deck that I'm really interested in trying. Have you guys seen... It's just, it's just like the Wasteland Strangler deck. That I think is also interesting, though not as aggressive. Um, my opponent might be typing something in chat right now. I wasn't really paying attention to how much mana I had. I feel like that happens a lot. I'm going to cast Cord here. Paying costs. Surgical targeting. Wait, they went for it? They went for it. Holy shit. Holy shit. We actually couldn't win. I'm going to go get Eternal Witness just to completely blow them out. So they don't get to see my deck either. Oh, and then they're going to counter this? They're going to negate this after all that? Wow. All right, good shit, man. All right, they grabbed both of my Duskwatch recruiters. That was pretty well played. Um, so I guess what I'm going to do here... Oh, I have chat. I just have chat on the other screen. I appreciate it, though. Uh, even if we had Ronus, our our guy got countered. This isn't dying or anything, right? No, this is the only thing on the stack. All right. So I still have infinite mana, just nothing to do with it. We can bolster something here. I'm gonna throw a bolster on. And Offenza, I suppose. Well, if I throw the bolster on Kitchen Finks, that seems pretty decent too. All right, I kind of don't want to swing with Anna Fenza here. And if I bolster the Kitchen Finks, that means I can still attack with it into Celestial Colonnades. We still have lots of live draws. Our Cocos are still good. You need to just not get verdicted. All right, there's the Serum Visions that we gave them. I guess we should have known that they had something sweet. Because they didn't cast the Serum Visions that we gave them. They went bottom top with Serum Visions. They're going to make three more Soldier Tokens. And Kitchen Finks will persist as a 4-3 once again. Uh, Eternal Witness means that we get to grow our team infinitely large. I'm going to keep Verdict Catacombs in hand and try to keep it. Alright, at this point we're just going to... Uh, I guess we actually have to attack Elspeth. Really doesn't matter. Our opponent is going to tick up Elspeth one more time and then make an Elspeth Emblem. Yeah, we need to draw either Ballista or Eternal Witness or Cord at this point. All right, they're going to Vendillion click, take our Verdant Catacombs. No, they're going to target themselves. Smart play. Because if I had anything good, I could just cast it here. Vendillion click, reveal it, revealing Vendillion click. Pretty smart. Take up Elspeth one more time. Next turn, they're going to go for the ulti. So it's really now or never. And what do we have here? Detention Sphere. I think we're... Ah, uh, no. Detention Sphere kind of gets us. 
But it doesn't stop everything we could do because we can still gain infinite life. They're going to target our devoted druid, most likely. Yeah. Um, it is game one. Oh, I can't kill devoted druid in response. All right. See you, devoted druid. Let's draw an eternal witness. Yeah, Coco can't get Ballista. All right, Horizon Canopy. Coming in clutch. Finally, Horizon Canopy. It's your time to shine. Horizon Canopy, Eternal Witness. Wow, Horizon Canopy. Finally, finally coming in clutch on the very last game here. Will Eternal Witness resolve? My opponent with one card in hand. We get to bolster the Eternal Witness, and then we get to bolster our entire team. Um... Gonna return Viscera Seer here. What a crazy game one. What is this? One white mana? Path to Exile on Kitchen Finks? No! Alright. Yeah, my opponent had it. Alright, so now we are locked into taking back Viscera Seer. Which is a pretty poor one. Then I'll play Viscera Seer, bolster itself. Canopy was clutch, though, there for sure. So my opponent can give all of their creatures plus two, plus two, and flying. I don't think I can come up with a way to beat that. Let's see, even if they sacrifice two of their guys here... Yeah, they still have way more than lethal. Alright, so we'll try to kill Elspeth. We'll at least make them chump block with two of their dudes. They might make some trades or something even. It's potentially a universe node just... Wait, just one block? What are they doing? They let Elspeth take five. Oh, I don't think they meant to do that. Um, what? I'm not just already dead here, right? No, I'm not. All right, well, Kitchen Finks off the top will give me infinite life again. They have Supreme? No, they don't have Supreme. They're just activating a Colonnade. Okay. That's solid. Colonnade is good. My opponent is Hellbent now. They have three Ghost Quarters in play. Wait, don't tell my opponent, but they can actually just Ghost Quarter me out of the game right now. <laughs> my opponent can 100% just ghost quarter and then I can't win block block I go down to 9 oh that would be such a funny way to end this game they're gonna go for it they're gonna ghost quarter me out holy shit which means with this Verdant Catacombs in hand, if I draw Kitchen Finks, we still doing it. This is another reason to play um, Basic Swamp here. Kitchen Finks. Let's go, baby. Kitchen Finks one time. Or Coco into Kitchen Finks. Birds of Paradise. Fuck you. Fuck you, Birds of Paradise. All right. Well, my opponent can attack me with a Vendillion Click and a Celestial Colonnade. I need to block... One, two, three, four. And maybe they won't notice. Let's play Birds of Paradise, bolster Birds of Paradise. I probably should have sacrificed Eternal Witness. Yeah, I could have scried one. Alright, they're going to activate one of the colonnades. That means they only have to hit us with two soldier tokens. Yeah, if they just attack with all, we lose. Yeah, they're probably going to notice. Yep, here they come. Alright, so they attack with everything. No, they're not. They're, they're, they're looking at their own life total. They're at six.
They don't want to die to Dryad Arbor? Seven. Seven is just enough. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, so we block five of them. We're going to take two damage from unblocked soldier tokens. Let's see if we would have gotten there, though. We do have another game to play, so I don't want to take too much time off my clock here. See if we would have gotten there. Windswept Heath, no. One more card? No, okay. Oh god. Oh god. Oh shit. Wait, I actually just would have won that game. I would have blocked the Colonnade, swung out. They block Vizier of Remedies. Take six. I could have sacked Anafenza, but it would have given us infinitely large creatures as well. As well. I just punted that so horribly. Wow. That was embarrassing. All I had to do there was block Celestial Colony with Birds of Paradise. I forgot about flying. Forgot about the flying ability on Birds of Paradise. What a clutch ability. Oh, God. <laughs> that was really terrible. Something like this is what we want to play for Game 3. What is this emote? I don't even know what this emote is. <laughs> I don't know all the emotes yet. Forgive me. Definitely want Selfless Spirit. Probably want Reclamation Sage more than I want Abrupt Decay. Probably do want both of them. Oh, it says Shame. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. Hmm... All right, I'm tilting. Let's be on the play. Let's just win this one. How does that sound? Turn two title of Skuller, Selfless Spirit back up. It's going to be a while till we can play a collected company, though. His hand still seems solid, though. Title of Skuller can do a lot of work against blue-white. Probably take their path and then try to blank their um, wrath with this. Yeah, hands solid, but not fantastic. We're also in an awkward part, like we're cracking a fetch land and then hoping to top deck more lands, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, no ancestral from our opponent is pretty lucky too. <laughs> That's the Clutch Horizon Canopy. Alright, well if we can just chain these together, that's pretty sweet too. Yeah, if we can curve out and just hit one more land, or two more lands, it's quite fantastic. Oh, I hope they path this in response. Alright, they're not going to. They're going to Spell Snare it. That's not what I want. Hmm. Possibly.
The it's like the marginal life gain over the marginal thinning. It's about the same. Alright, they don't have Snapcaster up this turn, so we get to play Devoted Druid. That fixes all of our mana problems if they don't have a Path to Exile. If they have a Path to Exile... Oh, let's not attack for two this turn, because um, their life total matters. <laughs> Alright. Well, now we can keep open Coco. Let's actually get in there. I'm going to go for end step Coco here, uh, especially when we've got like Reclamation Sage in the deck that we might not want to use just yet. All right, they got five mana for something. No clue what that is. It's probably just a spell and cryptic command. They probably also just figure they owe me one because I didn't swing for two. So this way they'll they'll make it even here. So probably dispel on this. Yep. And then we have to hit another land to try to cast this company. All right. Well, that's not going to happen. And they're still representing cryptic command. Unfortunately, all we can do is cast Sin Collector here. Well, yeah, okay, well, Sin Collector here, and then next turn we might actually have the win. Let's attack for two first. I don't think they're going to Cryptic and tap our team. I probably should have just played Sin Collector pre combat. So that if they thought Cryptic Tap our team was right, then we bait them into it. Alright, so counter draw is going to be the play. No, counter bounce. Um, that's still fine. Decent tempo. Yeah, I think that's a good play by them. It's decent tempo when I only have two lands out. Four mana, Jace Architect. Can almost tick down, but yeah, they're going to tick up with it. Noble Hierarch and Orzov Pontiff are really interesting things against Jace. Let's just attack Jace for now. I think we're going to win this game. My opponent has Jace and nothing else. Well, I'm sorry. They've got Jace and two cards in hand. But they have a low life total. They do get to keep open Colonnade next turn. I guess that's actually pretty unfortunate. But we also have the combo. Alright, so we just don't want to give them interaction. If they want negate, that's all they get. I think they're going to wind up taking Negate here. Yeah, they put Negate in their hand. So they have Negate, but... We can play around that. Um, one, two, three, four. So they can't even activate Colonnade here. They never could. gonna hold on to Pontiff. Hmm. It's tricky. Right, let's start by killing Jace. 
I'm pretty sure this is going to go off without a hitch. Uh, this ticked down. Won't have to play Noble. Yeah, yeah. It's a blessing. Oh, that's annoying. Could have. No, I couldn't have played around. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could have just attacked with Devoted Druid. I should have attacked with it. Play around Blessed Alliance. Oh, I don't love losing this creature either. That's what's super annoying. Opponent still has negate mana up. Okay. Could have just sacrificed it in response, I guess. That would have been better. Still doesn't buy us that much. Um... Play a noble. Four, five. All right, we can go for an end step or at random point vizier. We're gonna tick Jace up. Do they have another mana? They don't. So yeah, let's go for an end of turn um, dusk watch recruiter. With the potential for this to be something else instead. Pretty sure this is just going to be Duskwatch here, though. Uh, or it's just going to get negated, is all. Okay. And then where are we at? We can do it again. One, two, three, four. Try to hit a live draw off of Horizon Canopy with the infinite mana. And go for it. Or we can just go get Duskwatch. I think I like just getting Duskwatch a little bit better. Uh... Play Orzov Pontiff to almost kill Jace. I think it's going to be better to wipe Elspeth tokens at some point. My opponent, like, taps out for Elspeth next turn. I'll just go end step cord. Yeah, alright, let's... Uh, what if we hit... What if we hit a Vizier off of Horizon Canopy? One, two, one, two, three, four. Alright, sure. Right, nothing. That's fine. That pretty much means that I have to commit to just dumping my hand here, though. Yeah, we'd be in a much better position if I just attacked with my Devoted Druid last turn. And I thought about it, too. Because I wasn't using the mana. I mean, I wound up using some of the mana. Oh, this Noble smashes for one. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Alright, my opponent's going to cash in their Jace now. Really don't like giving them Ghost Quarter either, but definitely don't want to give them Vendillion Click. So they can have Vendillion Click, or they can have an Ancestral in a bunch of turns. Yeah, they just took the two cards. They just always take the two cards. Who are we kidding? Ancestral gets suspended. They still don't have Colonnade Mana open. Let's crack this. That means they gotta have something, though. Temple Garden. So I can attack Jace here. I'm not even convinced that that's great. I can use Orzhov Pontiff to kill Jace. I think I might just want to lock that up now. Oh, I could have just used Gavany Township. I don't want to play Gavany into Ghost Quarter, but realistically, my opponent's not going to just Ghost Quarter 
my random land, so I should have just done it. Yeah, this is silly. Alright. My guys get plus one, plus one. I'm doing this just to play around like a spot removal spell of some sort. I just want to guarantee kill Jace. It definitely got enough value for my opponent already. feel like I'm kind of throwing this game. All right, Blessed Alliance, just to make me sack a creature. Um, again, should have attacked with Devoted Druid. And then this one's going to get pathed or something. Yeah. Alrighty. Wow. Twice I've made that same mistake. That's annoying. Just go and grab a Goblet Shrine now. And now they're going to play Elspeth. Ancestral down to three. Elspeth tick up. Jace tick up. Ooh, Watery Grave. Going down to nine, that's interesting. Vizier of Remedies means we might win. We got a chance here, boys. Even with all of my fuck-ups. Thank you very much, Celestial Raven, for the follow. Again, even after all of my fuck-ups. Alright, they're gonna path the Druid. Sounds good. Probably could have put that in the graveyard instead. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Okay. I can cord here. I'm just gonna Gavany here. We'll make them tap their ghost quarter. I'm down to three minutes. I'm not gonna be able to win this match. I'm not even gonna be able to win this game. I've been playing, like, pretty, pretty terribly. So I don't think that I deserve to win, but... Still gonna give it my honest shot here. With three and a half minutes left. There were definitely ways that we could have win this, won this game, and it was simply just attacking with our Devoted Druid when the attacks were free. All right. So just want to, whoever said this earlier, I'm F6 right now, but it's letting me do whatever I want here. Give them a Sphinx's Revelation or Island Cryptic Command. Both of those seem pretty freaking insane. They took Island Cryptic Command. No way I can beat either of those cards here, though. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, no attacks. I can still win this game for what it's worth, but would have been much easier. Oh, I forgot they're drawing three more cards soon here. Next turn, I believe, they're going to draw three more. Yeah, next turn. All right, well, I have infinite mana. I wonder what that'll do for me. get countered all right so they're gonna counter this and draw a card and then in response right I hate that on Texas cryptic commands you can't see what they're doing all right they're gonna counter draw a card so in response let's one, two, three, four, five. Cast Court of Calling for X equals two. They're going to negate this. No dispel. All right. That should do it. That should just about wrap things up here. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's also true. I also missed the missed the attack with the spirit. Hmm. Maybe also could have attacked last turn. Alright, my opponent getting rid of getting rid of Crucible of Worlds to draw one card deeper into their deck. We're pretty much dead here. Snapcaster Cryptic in response to Gavany Township. Seems solid. They just tap my team and draw a card, they win. I don't know what mode they're doing. It's probably tapping my team and drawing a card. Yep. Alright, good game, opponent. You got us. I played that absolutely miserably. I think that is enough Magic the Gathering for me for the day. Let's see. And I think that that is also going to be enough streaming for me for the day. Yeah, 6.15, that's about good enough. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate um, <laughs> everybody putting up with me. I'll throw the deck list up on the screen again. I think that mostly what I need to work on is just my own ability to both play the game and manage magic online so hopefully i'll get better with that as we're streaming i already know that i'm better than on magic online than what i used to be i used to just get so much anxiety as i was playing on this i'm going to throw the stream over to my buddy ixidor's dreams ixidor's i'm not sure if you are already set up and ready to go but i will just hit you up with a host and that'll bring the guys over there regardless Right now, let me just mute this. I want to say thank you guys for watching. Also, thank you for everybody that has followed along new on this stream and old. Everybody that has been following before and just everybody for watching. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have not already, feel free to hit that follow button to be notified when I go live. I stream a lot of digital card games such as Magic the Gathering Online, but also some Hearthstone some Eternal and Soulforge and other different games thrown in there. Those are like my main four. But also some like Duelist, Faria, Elder Scrolls, Shadowverse, Gwent, that type of stuff. Mostly, mostly the ones that I mentioned at the beginning there. Also, if you have not yet already, I've got a link to my YouTube channel in the info, info below. So if you go down to the info or go up and to the right if you're on mobile to check out my info. There is a link to my YouTube channel. There are post full stream VODs as well as highlight clips and different informative things like that. So feel free to check that stuff out and give me a follow there as well. But other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm going to toss it over to my buddy who was kind enough to give us this Horizon Canopy. Let me know if you want this back right now or if I'm good to hang on to it for a little bit. Your call, and I will see you guys soon. Have a good one. Peace.